Perfect. Good morning, everyone. It's a, a pleasure and a bit of frustration that we are meeting online again for for this time. But I'm sure we'll we'll, we'll find some next times where we could find we could find a place to meet. Uh, so to welcome you for this uh, Sofa Technical Committee number eleven. It's you know the place where all developers of the community were. Uh, no matter where they are located, can actually join and, and meet to actually design first the, the roadmap, and namely the task that will actually uh, evolve and, and, and be uh, uh, that you are, you'll be actually working on in the next six months. And also a time for discussion and, and uh, encoding sprint. We'll see about the agenda. All the information you need actually can always, always, always be retrieved on the sofaframework.org page slash STC11. So the overview of the agenda for today and the days after, so actually Wednesday and Thursday. For today, it's going to be really the day around the roadmap. It's always the way we, we are actually designing those, uh, those three days of um, a technical committee. The purpose is to design some tasks that we'll, we know will actually evolve in the next month so that people outside from the community, community can actually look into SOFA and understand actually what's going on. And day two and three, there will be additional dis technical discussions that can actually be some kind of extension of discussions that will occur today. Uh, and in parallel, uh, coding sprints, we prepared uh, many, uh, some complicated, some less complicated tasks for a coding sprint. It's also a good, uh, I think, a good moment just to meet all the developers and to uh, and to chit chat together and maybe to ask also your questions and to start uh, getting in the code of, uh, of SOFA. For today, day one, Tuesday, so this Tuesday, we're going to we're going to work uh, in, in, in three phases somehow. First, it's going to be super, super short. It's going to be consortium news. Then, uh, well, it's, it's going to be a bit more, a, a bit longer and still this morning about the, the activity of the last six months with first a round table and that's where that's as Guillaume, as Guillaume said it's actually very very useful that you are actually not muted so that you we can we can actually chat together and ask you about some news we've got actually plenty of registrations where people you guys gave us some some insight about what you did and what you will do and maybe it's also the opportunity here to unmute let you be known from others so that it can create also some some synergy so last six months activity and then still about these six months we'll review the roadmap so basically the tasks that we said six months ago it was back in back in november that we said okay we're going to work on those tasks of us of roadmap we're going to assess what went well and what actually took a bit more time and at the end of this morning, we're going to already start a roundtable about what will happen in the next six months. Again, the, the purpose is to know what are your plans and uh, from your plans and from your developments that you already scheduled, define a, a joint roadmap for the whole of a project. Again, as we wrote, really, if you want to, the definition of the roadmap, it's really this idea of having projects uh, they can be in SOFA, they can be outside of SOFA, but open source so that, you know, people can actually, and connected obviously to, to SOFA, but so that people can have a look to what is going on uh, in the community in and around SOFA. And those projects have to, as much as possible, you know, have concrete objectives. I know that there is ideas that you have and you would like to start in the next six months. But the, the other way, the, the, uh, always the idea is to get those tasks so that people can see, okay, oh, they are they are up to this point, they succeeded to do that, that and that, but those points are actually missing. And it's also helping for the next STC to, to you know, look back and look uh, look at what has been done and, and what, what, is, uh, what is missing. So projects with concrete objectives and that the SOFA community, us, you, all together, we commit to achieve in the... We commit to achieve in the in the next six months and this afternoon based on these you know plans of developments that we, that you have guys the idea is to have some discussions about specific topics there is there is actually several that uh, that, that went up to us uh, that you that, that you provided us uh, in the uh, in the in the yeah in the registration uh, and we'll I will detail them uh, right uh, right after 
So first, as we said, for the morning, about the last six months activity, first a round table, sharing the activity uh, of your past activity in the last six months. Uh, as, as, as written, it's, and uh, as I said before, it's really to get known uh, each other and also to learn uh, about out of roadmaps, things that occurred around so far and that were actually not necessarily planned six months ago. And then review what we planned really in the roadmap six months ago and making some reports, uh, you know, although there were actually four main topics and we'll have some, some reports uh, on, those, uh, on those four topics. Then at the end of the morning, and it will continue with discussions in the afternoon, the idea is to make this again a roundtable of plan activity around SOFA for the next six months. The, we will list all the potential projects and the idea in the discussion rooms is really to list objectives so that we end up with some kind of really clear idea on where to go. It does not necessarily mean that you have to know exactly each step of develop development, but a list of objectives always help in the, in the you know, construction of, of a project. And all those tasks, we'll review them tonight, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, not tonight, uh, or maybe for some of you, it's going to be a bit late, but tonight, tonight at the end of the, of the day, we'll, we'll review these, uh, these discussions topics. And day two and day three, and that's maybe something I'd like to, to point you out, is actually those, there will be also technical discussions that will take place and that will continue. Uh, you can find all those uh, uh, discussions topics here uh, on, this, uh, on this link here, stc11 slash discussions. And there are slots for discussions. You can see if some of the topics you would like to actually uh, discuss are there or not. Maybe they, are, they will already be discussed uh, this afternoon for the roadmap definition, but if you want to pursue them, do not hesitate to save some, uh, some specific, uh, specific slots for that. And obviously, as I said before, coding sprint, it's also, as we, as we already said, you know, the, the, the occasion, the opportunity to meet developers and code uh, all, to, all together. That's what, was, what you should find actually in the document uh, in uh, you know, STC 11 discussions, that's, we copy pasted it here. So you should find something, something like that here. So with two rooms for the moment, we could create a bit more, but I think it should be sufficient for now. And as you can see, there will be, there is already identified discussions that some of them will be on the roadmap. So some others are not necessarily here. We have an appointment for instance with Jack Ale uh, tomorrow uh, early afternoon. So you'll see, different plannings. Do not hesitate to propose your ideas in the available slots. All right. If there is any questions, obviously, I uh, forgot to say that you can anytime interrupt, uh, unmute yourself and just uh, jump, in, uh, jump in the discussion. So it's uh, always most welcome. So a few feedback about the consortium activity first. So, as you know, the SOFA Consortium is uh, a gathering of partners. It could be industrial, but for, for the moment there is none. But the idea is that the SOFA Consortium brings bring together industrial and academic partners that want to support on the long run SOFA and to make those meetings, to make the developments, to make actually the development activity of some developers. I'm going to talk about them in a, in a sec. Uh, always possible with, uh, with you know, showing uh, their support to SOFA, either through contributions, open source contribution, and in their case, it's actually even through financial support. So I'd just like to, to thank them again. And again, this year, we had the support of additional uh, donors like University Verna and Harvard Medical School. This year, again, just about uh, the SOFA consortium activity. Uh, as you might know, I don't know if everyone knows here, but we are providing training sessions more and more actually. We, we already trained here 36 people since the beginning of the year. It's already, uh, it's already more um, like in, all, in, in, a, in a small group sessions. It's already more than last year, where in the whole year we did uh, 25, uh, 25 people, plus some conferences obviously, but uh, 36 it's outside conferences. So it's really a proof for 
us and also for Inria, which is funding the most of the engineers, uh, I mean, at least uh, of the SOFA consortium um, with the consortium members. It's a proof that there is an interest in the open source project because people are getting trained on that and, and, and most of them actually are paying for, paying for it. And there is an, an really a growing interest around those training sessions. So now we are working with Inri Academy, which is responsible for trainings around open source technologies like SOFA. Just so that you know, if you have you know further uh, trainees that will come for the summer, or if you have PhDs that will start in September, never hesitate to let us know. Uh, the The core idea with those training sessions is really not to make money, just to make things clear. We had an issue in SOFI that people were having issues to you know make the first steps in SOFA, getting the, the their first experience of development and so on in SOFA. So we needed this kind of introduction to SOFA and then training on specific uh, points like constraints, collision detection, uh, integration schemes, and so on and so forth. So that's something that we are pushing strong forward, those next, uh, uh, those, those training sessions. And do not hesitate to always contact us, contact us if you need them in the context of your own research, of a project or any, any, any context. As I told you, we, we've got uh, four actually engineers granted by INRIA only on SOFA, on the open source project, that's Fred working on the mod modularization of the core. And we've got also three additional engineers working in research teams on specific topics, uh, like a, modul a modular library for solid mechanics. It's the case of uh, Jean-Nicolas. Robin, who is working on the coupling uh, between SOFA and uh, AI libraries like PyTorch, uh, Scikit-Learn, and, and hopefully more and more. Uh, we'll have another presentation of, of uh, integration, you know, which is called uh, Sofa Gym, cooking Sofa and Gym from OpenAI this morning. And Alex, who arrived working, uh, it's a, a former PhD uh, uh, around, uh, around Sofa, but he, he came back to work on modernization of the constraints pipeline and resolution. So that's going to be a topic as well for the next days of discussions. And this, with your development activity is actually boosting currently the development around Sofa. Well, you can actually see that directly from, from the Gitter. To explain, you know, what is justifying this kind of increase of uh, engineering forces around SOFA, I gave you here the criteria of success uh, according to Inoya. First, SOFA has to be a scientific uh, 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 reference software. So there, there has to be a scientific vitality. Uh, uh, obviously, in the in, in research in, in research institute in France and outside, you know, the more activity there is outside, and the the more support we will get as well um, in for for SOFA. Contributions are super important, like uh, really super important. It can be documentation, tutorials, bug fix, just making a small video, whatever, a plugin. It's always, you know. Uh, 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 measured and and then we we can report that to 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 Inaya. citation papers uh, uh, you know your your uh, presence here today and uh, also at the last you know technical committee and the number of obviously of donors and members around so far so here it's actually the lo the logo of of the 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 main uh, the main um, contributors of the 2012 release, and we'll update them for the upcoming uh, to, uh, 2106, so the release of June this month. And that's just the reminder. Uh, uh, and yeah, so sorry, sorry, Christian, I forgot, uh, I forgot Damien, Damien, which is a, which is also a, a, uh, uh, engineers, uh, engineer from CNRS uh, in, in the north of France, dedicated mostly on SOFA. Um, so the way of contribution is actually up to you. All that matters to us is that we, at the end of the day, build a, co a, a community with contribution for as, as it can be, you know, code, models, and so on, but it can be also providing your help on the forum, documenting things also on the documentation, communicating about SOFA, and obviously also financial support is, uh, is, uh, is, is, a, is a strong aspect as well for uh, Inaria. So any of your activity is actually always valuable for us and is also self-profitable since SOFA will improve 
it will benefit you and all the others in the same time. That's really the philosophy. And that will be the last slide here uh, about you know the, the community and the activity of the SOFA consortium. It's you know the different point entry point here for the community workflow. Obviously, we are having those technical committee for which are occurring twice a year. And the main purpose for us is to define the roadmap, but it's really as well an opportunity for you to meet and to talk about your project of development. Gitter, Gitter it's really the place where we go chat, uh, ask questions uh, about especially development things. That's where all the developers are actually located. Never hesitate to jump in. Uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe Guillaume can actually add the the, 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 the guitar for today again it's a, a bit upper I think in the in the chat so do not hesitate to join and chat with us and every week we are having this te this technical small meeting with all the developers about the weekly activity which is the sofa dev there is a dedicated mailing list that you can find on the get involved page of sofa I won't mention the forum, you might all know about it. So it's uh, 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 it's really the basic support for newcomers in SOFA. And just, I added just a, a, a data that I uh, updated uh, uh, yesterday evening. So actually this year curve should be a bit upper because uh, I, I did a, a few replies yesterday evening, but uh, anyway, it's uh, it's really the, the showing the form activity. And as you can see, it's slowly, but here definitely surely, uh, increasing, especially since the 2012, including SOFA Python 3, we are having you know, a huge uh, attractivity uh, around, uh, around the community. So yeah, thank you uh, again for, for the link. So if you have any question about those different points, do not hesitate, but as it is a developer meeting, it should be pretty fine for every, everyone here. We'll move to the already second part. Uh, I, can, uh, I can I can just remind you here, you know, the for, for day one, it was consortium news. That's what we just covered here. And we'll, we're going to move about this last six months activity. So for this last six months activity, we define a roadmap, which is here. And we will discuss each of those four points uh, together. There will be presentation about so for Python 3, NG, uh, so next gen packaging and topology. But first, before talking about those four points, we want you to have some feedback of yours about you know what was your activity and uh, and maybe uh, I could sorry sorry and maybe I could have uh, maybe Guillaume and Fred can maybe help me and just point out people so that you can actually tell us what you are, what you have been up to uh, in those uh, in those different in those six months, uh, we're going to have already prepared presentation. So all that we are going to talk right now is outside roadmap. It's actually topics that were not necessarily planned six months ago, but where you guys actually worked on. Uh, maybe we can start with Alex, is, if it's fine for you. And then if anyone which is not listed here worked on some other topics, which is not on the roadmap, just let me know and unmute, uh, unmute yourself and let us know about it. Okay. Yes, Alex, definitely. So I'll, I'm going to make you presenter and now you should be able to share your screen on the middle button, uh, just uh, like at the sofa week uh, and so on. All right, I'm coming. Uh, Perfect. Uh, In the meantime, if, if there is any, any question here, do not hesitate to to drop uh, drop your questions in the, in the either in the chat or in the guitar, we have eyes everywhere, so you can just post. Okay, Christian, w uh, would you like to 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 make them first, maybe Christian? Because I, I see since uh, uh, Alex and, and Christian, you, you're working. Okay, uh, or or is is it fine for you to make it, to make them right after uh, Christian? Uh, my my computer just froze, so I'm gonna reboot. Okay, so we'll do, Christo, we'll do Christian first, okay? All right. I, I can take. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the presenter, Christian. Okay. Is it okay? It's loading, yeah. Okay, uh, you can hear me? Yes, very nicely. Perfect. 
Okay, perfect. So just uh, I, I try to I try to keep it uh, very short. So we have a project on uh, which is called INR Cost Route, where we will improve the plugin cost route that has already uh, uh, that already encode a model of of cost route. We'll have had a new formulation and we will do uh, work on code optimization, parallelization. Um, we have another project uh, which is called INR Robocop. Um, which is uh, working on the uh, cochlear implant and actually we are using this plugin Cosra and we will we we'll also add a new feature on it uh, the electromechanical model uh, so it's more or less python code and uh, a model of the implant um, about just, can, yes. can I ask just a very short question about electromechanic is that yes. is, is that going to be involved you know the it's not going to involve the guys from uh, APN, so no, it's it's because we we are developing uh, an actuator. Uh, okay. And this implant and okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Let me see the video. We um, we have another project, <laughs> SIM card test, which involved the team <laughs> APN actually. Good transition, thank you, Hugo. And uh, we are working on plasticity and fatigue on this uh, project so we'll integrate plasticity and fatigue first in the plugin beam adapter uh, thanks to camille and after that in the plugin uh, costra 2 and we will work on navigation so it will be more or less the python code and uh, we will also provide a, a heart heart model so it's it's more scenes that we will provide uh, in this project um today so you will have a presentation just after but uh, we have been working on sofa gym it's uh, it's uh, of course c++ code and python scene uh, the idea is to to do uh, to, to do machine learning on C sofa simulations so but i think uh, etienne will present that in, uh, and and yes, yes. and then there is also work on the cohesion pipeline that alex will present uh, just after me uh, we have a project on the suction cup. <laughs> uh, so the idea is that to to create uh, to simulate the the suction, and uh, so it was uh, um, the PhD thesis of Antonin Bernardin, and recently Lali Kovut worked on that to improve it. Uh, so it's a plugin. Uh, so of course with C plus plus code and Python, and uh, we are working on the paper. Um, we are working also on anisotropy in the plugin uh, SOFA high order. So Felix, uh, who is working on this project, and made some modification on this code. Uh, but we are we uh, so just I, I, I launched the video <laughs> so that you can see. So th this these robots are made with anisotropic uh, material. Uh, and they are modeling so far, but uh, we are thinking to move to Caribou maybe uh, in the future uh, because it's difficult to maintain a so far high order. Um, we have been working also on optimization, uh, our algorithm to do inverse uh, simulation, in particular to, to do. Um, uh, equality constraints in the inverse problem. So here you see uh, uh, you, in the in the simulation you have the inverse problem. You, you, the inverse problem is how much we need to pull on this cable, uh, on this cable here, uh, made of Cosra model, um, to 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 deform the robot where we want. So it's guided by the this uh, the motion of this orange uh, sphere. Um, so it's a coupling between FEM Cosra model, and we need to have equality constraints on the optimization. There are many features that have been developed by Damien, but I think he also have a presentation. Um, we've been working on model order reduction. Uh, we have extended model order reduction to self-contact formulation. Um, so, for instance, when the robot here you see uh, there is self-collision. And in that case, we we can uh, increase the, the computation of this contact uh, through model order reduction. And there is manpower to arrive on this to maintain this uh, this model order reduction uh, plugin that is available uh, for everyone. And we we have a lot of discussion in the team concerning uh, a lot. We have discussions in the team concerning all the stuff that is done 
that is done on control, and particularly the, the link between SOFA and MATLAB. Um, for instance, uh, um, uh, we had some work to, uh, made on PhD of Maxim uh, that has been put in LGPL uh, license. So I don't know if some of you have the same problem, maybe we can discuss. You mean it's, oh, it's already available? Uh, sorry, okay, so it, it's yeah, yeah. already available? To, okay. Uh, so we, we the idea uh, was to, to put the, this code in LGPL license. So, for instance, with this, this code, you can, uh, the idea is to extract uh, matrices from SOFA, put them into MATLAB. Uh, I, I, yeah, actually, se se several people control. actually uh, I, I tried to, uh, to achieve this uh, or worked on, on similar projects, but never provided it open source and so on, so it would be definitely super useful. I wanted also just to discuss uh, very shortly about uh, what's next, like I, because I, th I think it's past, but in the future, we have been working on a big project, which is called T-Rex, where we, we are supposed to do digital twins of robots, and in particularly three, three robots that are developing this project. Uh, Mongoscope in Strasbourg, uh, XXL robot with cable in Nantes, and a micro robot in Besançon, and maybe a four, a first one in REN uh, with manipulation. So this project uh, will be launched uh, this year or next year, and, and we will have some resource uh, for engineering resource to, to develop this uh, digital twins of robots. Um, and we also, I wanted to, probably there will be an action. Uh, uh, so I, I have a project. <laughs> now I try to find uh, finance. Uh, so I've asked to Inria, but it's not yet decided to, to work on a specific user interface for modeling robots in SOFA. That's a big action that I want to, to push. And that's it right. for me. Thank you very uh, much, Chris. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's great. Uh, all right. So I, 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 <laughs> I, I, took, I took it back. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, if there is yeah, a, sh a short question, or you can maybe uh, directly also write in the, in the chat if you'd like, uh, guys. Um, and and yeah, maybe uh, again, do not hesitate to check. You know, uh, if some of the topics, or make sure that some of the, the topics you'd like to address, you know, will be addressed either if they are on the roadmap this afternoon or the days after. Uh, and you mentioned a bit earlier, uh, coupling with the, uh, Caribou. We schedule some discussions, specific discussions about you know how to integrate FEM codes in Caribou. I think it should be super interesting to make that kind of uh, of sessions. Uh, Jean-Nicolas was already saying it. Good idea for for having uh, uh, things. I think like uh, it was for plasticity. I, I don't remember uh, the, 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 that you wanted to see for in Caribou. For, for anisotropy. Anisotropy. Sorry, I know that it's uh, because uh, in the US, uh, Jorg is actually interested uh, in uh, in uh, plasticity. Uh, 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 I, I think as well as uh, plastic and hyper uh, elast uh, hyper elastic and plastic materials. Uh, so that could be uh, interesting discussions. Thank you, Christian. Uh, Alex, are you ready to tell us a bit more about you know the improving collision detection uh, or basically the work that you did in the last six, six months? I'm gonna do my best, and it's okay. actually three months, not six. Because yeah, I yeah, started, yeah, 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 yeah. I started uh, three months ago. Even if we could have the feeling, it's six, but it's <laughs> only three. All right. Um, let me share my screen. So, if you don't know me, um, so I'm an engineer in the Defrost uh, team, and I did my PhD with Sofa uh, a few years back. Um, so, uh, yeah. Here is my uh, slide. Can you see it? Yeah, it's loading. So it, it's okay. it's only uh, three uh, three slides, I think. Uh, yeah, perfect. So it's gonna be quick. So the first thing I did is to uh, modularize the collision pipeline. Uh, so basically, we had uh, several components in so far, such as uh, you see brute force detection. Uh, which inherits from broad phase detection and nerve phase detection. And um, I thought it uh, confusing because, uh, for example, this component does not mean that we do brute force 
collision detection, it's only in the broad phase that we do a brute force uh, uh, detection. But in the narrow phase, it's a bit more clever than that. And we use a uh, boundary volume hierarchy. So uh, the, the, the second reason why I did uh, this modularization is uh, because they, uh, it, it, uh, there, there were some uh, duplicated code. Uh, for example, the brute force brute phase was uh, in uh, the component brute force detection, but also in ray trace detection, in direct, in uh, CUDA collision detection. So instead of duplicating the code, I uh, introduced uh, the, com the new component brute force brute phase, um, which can be used in uh, the, the previous component, but it could it could also be used directly in uh, the scenes. And I uh, similarly I introduced the the component uh, BVH narrow phase. So if you if you look at the brute force uh, detection, it's actually the sum of the brute force brute phase and the BVH narrow phase. And you can, uh, of course, use any uh, or replace any broad phase algorithm uh, by another. And similarly for the narrow phase. And uh, this brings me to a uh, new uh, component uh, related to the broad phase and the narrow phase. It's uh, the equivalent that already exists, but uh, the multi-threaded equivalent. So we have the parallel brute force broad phase and the parallel uh, BVH narrow phase that they are currently in the multi-threading uh, plugin. So uh, in your scenes, you can, uh, if you have the multi-threading plugin, you, you just have to add the, the word parallel in front of uh, the components and your scene will be faster. And uh, another work on the multi-thread, uh, it's uh, on the free motion animation loop. So on the, on the left, you see the sequential, uh, 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 yeah, the sequence of uh, steps uh, in the free motion animation loop. And on the right, the, the diagram is the multi-threaded approach. So um, you see that the, pre, the free motion step can be executed in parallel. Uh, if you have several objects in your scene, uh, they can be solved uh, in parallel. Uh, so it's not the free motion itself, which is uh, solved in parallel. It's the, the, the solving the, the different objects in parallel. So you need to have, um, several ODEs uh, solver in your scene. And you can also have the collision detection uh, executed in, in parallel. Uh, so you have to be careful uh, that you don't, uh, uh, you don't, uh, how to say, uh, run all your steps in parallel because uh, you have to be clever on the choice of the, your parallel tasks because collision detection, as you have seen with the new components, can also be a, uh, a parallel algorithm. Uh, that's it, actually, uh, for uh, the, the main work that I did for the past uh, three months. Uh, cool. Uh, I think, thank you very much, uh, Alex. Uh, Fred, I think you posted it. Uh, I did not open yet the link towards the, ah, okay, okay. Towards the, the pull request of Alex. Uh, all right. About parallel. So you'll, you'll find if you browse a bit the, the pull request, recent pull request of Alex, Alex on GitHub, you'll find all this work on parallel, uh, on parallelizing, especially the collision detection phase. So. Yeah, do not hesitate to get in touch. There, there could be also discussions about that later on uh, this afternoon or even the days, uh, the days after. Thank you, uh, Alexa. Uh, Robin, are, are you ready to present? Uh, uh, in the meantime, maybe, maybe you can ask, uh, Jean, uh, is Jean-Nico around here? Jean-Nico, Jean-Nico, Jean-Nico. 
Uh, yeah, Bruno, Bruno Jean Nico, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, um, yes. uh, you know, in the meantime, that you know, maybe uh, you can you can take the the floor, Robin, to pre to present your work on on coupling sofa plus an AI library, and in the meantime, maybe uh, you can tell us more about the, the Caribou plugin. Uh, Jean Nico, is that fine? Very well, or. No, we have some issues with your mic. Uh, do you have another mic entry or? Yeah, just give me one minute. No. And in the meantime, I'll make you presenter, uh, Robin. Where are you? Is Robin around here? Yeah, Robin here. Perfect. Can you can you speak just to test, Robin? Can you hear me well? Yeah, your your sound is the inverse. It's super weak. Uh, uh, either you can get closer from your mic or... Is that better if I speak uh, closer to the mic? A, a, bit, a bit better. Do not hesitate to, 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 uh, to, to yell yeah, on your mic and, and, okay. and it should be, yeah. Uh, you, your presenter, uh, I wanted to let you some time to, upload, to, you know, to share your screen and, and so on. Uh, let us know when you're back as well, uh, jean nico so that you can speak. Uh, about, about your your work in the Caribou plugin. Is that fine for you, Robin? Uh, can you can you share, share your screen in the meantime? Uh, yeah. Uh, um... So can you see my screen now? Oh, yeah, it's loading. Perfect, yeah, we can see it. So for those, for those who don't know me, I am Robin Angelbert. So I'm engineer at Strasbourg in the new university team. And I'm working on a uh, deep physics project for uh, uh, for four months. Uh, so this project is um, aiming at interfacing AA with uh, simulations. Um, so the, the project is to build a framework so that users can train neural networks with synthetic data from their simulations and also use their trained network in their simulation to produce predictions. Um, so this project comes from uh, some PhDs work in the new system, uh, which we're aiming at using AI as an alternative to FUM methods. Uh, so to predict, uh, to, to compute predictions uh, of uh, deformations of simulated objects. So for that, uh, a plugin was already existing, but was uh, really dependent from SOFA and PyTorch. And now the, the goal is to develop a Python package, uh, which includes uh, a core module, which has no dependency to SOFA, uh, neither PyTorch or other AA frameworks but only to Python common libraries such as NumPy. Um, uh, this project will also include two other modules, which is a simulation modules, which will uh, do the link between the simulation framework, for instance, SOFA, and the core uh, module, and also an AA module, which links the AA framework, for instance, PyTorch, um, to the core module. So how, uh, the framework work. Uh, so you, first, uh, when you want to train your network, you have to use uh, the trainer, which uh, triggers the training loop. Uh, this trainer needs a manager, which will manage all the objects of the pipeline. So first, uh, it will uh, trigger a step of the simulations. Um, this step will give some inputs and output data for the network. So these data are stored in the data set or can also uh, directly taken into the data set to train the network. And then um, the, the network is um, computing a state of optimizations and uh, some statistics are added to the, to the stat object so that you can see in real time all your, uh, how your network is training. And once your network will be, will be trained, uh, you, if you want to use it uh, as a predictor, you can use a runner object, so which will uh, trigger the prediction loop. And this will be quite the same. So you have to trigger a step of your environment, which will produce input data, 
to feed your network. And then you know, your network gives you a prediction that you can apply in your environment. So this is a pipeline of the core module uh, for both training and prediction. And then um, you have uh, also a simulation uh, module, uh, which inherits from uh, the, uh, the simulation objects of the core at for, and for SOFA, for instance, uh, which also inherits from SOFA controller. And the, on the other side, um, for your network model, you have to uh, use uh, a, a navy framework such as PyTorch. And then you have to inherit from the network of core and also from the uh, neural network module. And uh, how to use the framework. So when you want to um, run your network with uh, simulation data, you have to uh, implement at least two things. So first your simulation, you have to inherit from the simulation object from the simulation module and you have to method. Um, the first one will uh, create your uh, simulation graph. Uh, the two seconds uh, are used to produce the inputs and the outputs to give to your network. And the last one is a method to apply the predictions of your network into your simulation. And on the other side, uh, you have to inherit from the network object of the net of the AA may mm, of the AA module of the of the framework, and uh, you have to implement at least one method. You have to implement the forward method, so which will produce the prediction of uh, your network according to the input. And once you've done that, uh, here are oh here are. Um, the main scripts, uh, the main Python scripts to, to for both training and um, prediction. So you can see that this is a create uh, small. So all you have to do is to give to the trainer or to the runner uh, some configurations for your simulation and for your network. So what I achieved so far is uh, implementing uh, the core module uh, a SOFA compatible module and also a PyTorch compatible module. And that's it for uh, this short presentation. Thank you, Robin. And I think, uh, uh, I don't, uh, let me know if it's not the case, but I think it would uh, therefore make sense to discuss a bit this further uh, again with uh, Etienne, who is here. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, uh, since it's very Closely related, Etienne, would you agree to to take uh, to take the the next uh, presentation? Yes, I'm ready. Ready, ready. <laughs> your presenter now. You should be able to share your screen in the in yes. the bottom uh, icons here. Do you hear me? Yeah, and we see, uh, we see yeah, we see perfectly. Okay, so I'm Etienne. I'm a PhD student at uh, the first uh, team, uh, and I'm going to talk about Sofa Gym, which is an open platform for machine learning based on soft robot simulation uh, with Sofa. I'm working on Sofa Gym with uh, Pierre, who is another PhD student at the first. So, first question: What is Sofa Gym? SofaGym allows to create a link uh, between artificial intelligence and SOFA. And to do this, we create an OpenAI Gym interface out of a SOFA scene. OpenAI Gym interface allows to deal with reinforcement learning pro problem where an agent interacts with an external world through an action. And given the current state of the external world and the agent and the action, the external world return a new state. So the the new state of the external world and the agent, and a reward that's quantified the quality of the action to reach a particular goal. So with SofaGym, we want to solve, uh, to realize robotic control using reinforcement learning or planning with a standard interface. SofaGym is composed of three elements. The first one is the environment. 
So the environment um, implements classical gym function. So to interact with, uh, uh, to, to be the link between reinforcement learning algorithm and uh, the, the agent and the external world. We have four action, reset to restart from a particular state, step to apply an action in the environment, render to have a visualization of the environment and close to close the environment. The second element And uh, the goal of the gym is to create a link between the environment and the scene. And to do this, we use a toolbox to connect gym and sofa. Toolbox is composed of three functions, get state, get reward, and apply action. The get state and get reward function allows to recover some values from the scene. For example, get state with the function get state, we can recover the position of the robot and uh, position of different objects in the scene. And with the get reward function, we can compute, for example, the distance between one object and the goal we want to reach. So uh, with this two function, we create the link from the team to the environment. And the last function is apply action. And it just uh, takes the, the action given by the step function and apply it in the sofa scene with uh, the sofa Python 3 animation manager. So the toolbox allows to create the link in both in, uh, from the environment to the scene and from the scene to the environment. Uh, with uh, Sofa Gym, we had uh, two technical problems. The first one is that Sofa hasn't been designed to restart a simulation from a stored state. So if we have a sequence of action and we want to try uh, several action after this sequence of action, we have to simulate again all the sequence of action for all the new action we want to test. To solve this problem, we use a server worker architecture where each worker is associated with a sequence of action. And if we want uh, to test a new action, we force the worker to start from a particular sequence of action. We obtain a new worker identified by an history and a new action, and we simulate this new action in uh, the new worker. So with the graphic, we have our reinforcement uh, learning problem. We choose an action. This action is given to the environment and the environment asks the server with uh, this action and the history of action. The server associates um, the history of action to one client. We fork this client and we simulate the new action in the client and the client returns uh, the result of uh, the simulation. The second problem is we want to recover images from the clients. And to deal with these problems, we use two sofa scene, one mechanical scene and one visual scene. And the idea is to copy information from one to another. So if we want to have a visualization of our environment, so it's the end of our render function, we have Uh, uh, we lost you, or uh, am, I, am I the only yeah. one? No. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Etienne, can you can you hear us? We'll see. It's a. Uh, it's the the northern uh, internet connection, <laughs> which is, which is uh, which is failing. Ah, okay. Now now you're back, right? Okay, can you can you test your? I think it's mostly your mic because the, I, we we've got the slides, but we keep, um, and there you're muted. Yeah. Okay. Great, great, perfect. So I have to restart uh, one particular slide. No, no, no. There, there, there you are. It's perfect. Uh, we just okay. lost you for when, when I said that. You, we just lost you for a few a few seconds. Okay. So. We have our client with a mechanical scene, and we can get the position of the different object and return this position to the viewer through the server. The viewer has a particular visual scene, so the same scene, but without some uh, uh, solver extra. And we just update this scene with the position, we get the OpenGL context, and we transform this context into an image to obtain the image of the scene. And we can display this image, for example, with uh, so that's it for Sofa Gym.
the next step will be to create the link between Sophagym and SoftRobot on the web to realize some computation on the grid. So I already did some stuff, but it's in a particular case. So we have to generalize uh, this. Uh, other things will be to do a real-time visualization because for the moment we have just a visualization of the environment after one learning step. So this step doesn't correspond to uh, the simulation step in so far. So we have something uh, discontinuous. And of course, we can use a sofa gym to realize some application like uh, high level control. And that's it Great. for me. Yeah, thank you, Etienne. Thank you very much. Uh, the, uh, definitely, there, there is a lot of, uh, of parallel uh, between what, uh, what was just presented before uh, by Robin and, and what you are presenting. Uh, there is this uh, ser server, um, client, client server approach, which is definitely different, but yeah, uh, it would make sense uh, to, to maybe to, you know, to, to try to make things converge as much as possible to, to factorize yeah. development time uh, b between you guys. Cool. Of course. Uh, in the in the list, we had also Rui Long from uh, University of Florida, but he, since Florida is on the other side of the of the sea, he, he, he should uh, he should join a bit later on. I think yeah, I don't see him in the in the list, so uh, we're gonna give him the the mic uh, a bit afterwards. Uh, and there was a presentation of Damien that I will do because Damien is actually currently in a, in a jury. But if there is anyone else, so I'm gonna give first the mic to Jean Nico. Uh, that will present shortly uh, the plugin Caribou and explain what it is and where you can actually find it. Uh, if anyone else wants to take the mic, I know Gaëtan, you mentioned you know, your test of Caribou, as Sukraj uh, was mentioning as well a few things. So do not hesitate right after jean nico to, to unmute yourself and let us know what you did for the last six months. Okay, can yeah, you hear me well? Smooth and clear. Yes, perfect. Okay, I, I, I change uh, my computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I share the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, uh, a uh, presenter. You're, you're, okay, perfect. You're the chief. I didn't actually expect to present <laughs> a slide, so I just prepare very quickly a, a scene. Can you see my screen? Uh, it's loading. It's loading. Should be fine. You know, yeah, now we can see. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, so at, at this first caribou, um, for those who don't know, you can go on caribou.readthedocs.io if you want to have a brief overview of what you can find. So it's uh, basically a, it's a main library, caribou, that gives uh, tools uh, to do some computation on uh, specific geometry, geometric elements type. So. Uh, uh, triangle, tetrahedron, etc., and a set of topology tools that will work using these uh, geometrical elements. And uh, on top of this, you have uh, different kind of sofa uh, components, such as force field, linear solvers, um, and um, uh, yeah, different kind of uh, topological tools uh, and uh, ODEs. So. Um, what I did uh, for the past months, I'll just show you a very quick scene. I think it would, might be easier. Can you read uh, correctly if I zoom here? Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah there, there it's fine. At least for there me, it's fine, fine here. Okay, so it, this is a, a typical Python 3 uh, sofa scene. Uh, here with uh, Mesh IO, which if you don't know, it's a very, very useful um, Python library or Python modules that can read multiple type of uh, Mesh files. So in this case, I'm reading um, a quadratic tetrahedral Mesh of a rectangular beam. And I'm also reading a linear um, a triangle Mesh of a cylinder that will be embedded inside this quadratic beam. Uh, so I hope that was clear. Uh, so what I did, I implemented, well, first I implemented a backward Euler uh, ODS solver, which is actually compatible with nonlinear elasticity. So it will do a couple of Newton uh, iterations. Uh, I actually completely refactor, for those who, are, uh, who use uh, Caribou's ODE solver, I refactor those so that uh, it is 
uh, easier to implement your own ODE solver. So uh, you basically now have uh, three functions to uh, overload uh, the um, uh, assemble uh, left hand side of the uh, equation, assemble the right hand side, and then the propagate the solution. So you have these three methods to implement and you it will be compatible with the Newton solver of um, the Newton Rafton solver of Caribou. So yeah, I did this backward Euler thing. Um, I also uh, implemented Caribou topology, which is compatible with any geometrical types of Caribou. Uh, so in this case, it is a, a quadratic tetrahedral. Um, the hyperelastic force field, uh, it, uh, I mean, it was already there uh, last, uh, at the last uh, STC. Um, but now I also uh, have the caribou barycentric mapping, which will work um, with, uh, uh, with uh, any kind of uh, mesh, so quadratic, cubic, or linear one. Uh, so in this case, I have uh, my cylinder visual, which is barycentric mapped inside my quadratic uh, mesh, volumetric mesh. And I have the same thing for applying the traction. Uh, so I have my traction force field here, which will apply forces. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basically it. Oh yeah, I also, you, you can still see my screen. So I just, yes, let yes, me know yes, if perfect. there's anything good there. Uh, if I go on the GitHub of Caribou, uh, I now have macOS and Linux GitHub workflow, which will build uh, and test Caribou um, every night. Uh, so if I click on Linux, I will go on the uh, last night build. And you can see that it built and test against the master version of Sofa the v2006 and the 2012 version of sofa and you can actually download if i click uh, for example the caribou master it will download a zip that i will open up and you have this folder sofa caribou that you can just drag and drop inside your the plugin directories of sofa of the good version oh, cool. uh, and it it should work so uh, you can uh, just to recap you can go on the caribou github click on linux and the last workflow uh, you just download the version of sofa you have and you drag and drop on the plugin directory and you should have caribou working this is only for linux uh, i have some problems with mac os i need to sign the uh, libraries for it to work. I think it's uh, a Mac OS thing. So I'm working on it. But, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's what I did. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. And yeah, cool. Do, so, sorry? Did someone? Ah, yeah, no, 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 Stefan, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hello, uh, I, I, I wanted to ask uh, about the type of elements we could uh, easily, uh, I would say, have in Caribou. Um, we have, a, well, the student who jumped in the team is going to want to model blood vessels uh, using beam elements. And um, yeah. I would say whatever the implementation of the beam model, I think, uh, it's not clear to me if you know this is a straightforward thing to have uh, or not, but uh, I think would be interested. I think it might be of interest to other people listening to your presentation yeah. as well. Um, it's just me. I just want to check if I have my uh, previous presentation. Actually, uh, about that, um, uh, we, we that's that's actually one of the reasons why we, we prepared for. Uh, I think it's uh, that's what I wrote in the chat. I think tomorrow uh, afternoon a session. Uh, I'm I'm not sure uh, anymore, but uh, I'll, I'll confirm that a session about you know, caribou and how it could be useful for 
uh, as I said earlier, plasticity and isotropy. And I think for BIM as well, like there is Kemi working on that. There is also, uh, I know there is a Penny, Penyu and Aine that, that could be also interested in that. So yeah, could could be interesting. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Jericho. Yeah, can you still see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so basically that was in the last STC presentation. So creating new elements uh, in Caribou is try quite straightforward. So you have to implement uh, this get L, which are the shape values, uh, the derivative of these shape values, and the position and weight of the uh, quadrature nodes. Uh, once you have this, you can basically uh, pretty mm -hmm. much use any uh, components of Caribou. Uh, you just need to specify this new element as the template parameters. Uh, of, for example, uh, uh, in Sofa Caribou, you will have to at least do the Caribou topology uh, components with this uh, new element type and, and the. I mean, the other uh, um, Sofa components should work with this new element type. Um, so basically for a beam element, you would have to do this. Uh, you might have to um, uh, specialize some methods, uh, uh, for example, for probably for topologies. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to check, but it should be uh, not too difficult to do. Do we have to explain some issue because the, well, the current implementation we have of the beam uses uh, six degrees of freedom per node rather than three, or is that transparent yeah. in your case? Um, it will, I mean, uh, in my case, elements have uh, only uh, positions for the, each nodes, but I mean, you can, pretty much implements anything in your um, uh, your element structure here or your class. So you could store also um, the um, orientation. Uh, you just, like I said, you just need to have these three methods here um, so that at least we can get the shape value and the derivative um, for each uh, local coordinate inside this. So local coordinates are the barycentric coordinates inside your element, but you, you can pretty much do anything you want inside this structure. Uh, the minimum is that you have these methods. Um, and next, uh, for the different type of degrees of freedoms, I mean, uh, yeah, you probably would have to um, specialize some methods uh, inside the uh, different caribou elements. Uh, sofa caribou elements to uh, take into account these new uh, degrees of freedom. I guess uh, in your force field, if you have a beam force field, you will probably have to, uh, yeah, to to re-implement some methods. But uh, that's. I think this 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 could yeah uh, this would uh, this makes definitely sense to to discuss um, and and maybe to see also with uh, Christian or Kami. Uh, so the session uh, Guillaume gave the, the, the schedule it's tomorrow for four thirty. Uh, you can again find all the info about the schedule on the on the on the online agenda. But uh, yeah, to, to 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 see how it, yeah basically how to factorize a bit like we just, we said that for uh, Sofa and, and AI platform, uh, it would be nice as well for beams to to avoid yeah multiplying the implementation one in Sofa one in Caribou one in uh, one maybe in beam adapter that would be very similar and to make as Stefan proposed one one efficient one so. If you are fine with it, we could uh, we could uh, just meet uh, meet tomorrow for that. Uh, yeah, meet tomorrow for that at four four thirty. It's uh, I think uh, uh, wait yeah an hour and thirty minute discussions. So we should have plenty yeah a bit of time and even even more actually if you'd like. So discussion for that. Christian, if you yeah. if you are interested and Camille same same. So thank you very much. Uh, anyway. Uh, Jean-Nicolas for for the presentation. You really do not hesitate all to jump to the Caribou plugin and to look uh, how it how it looks like, what it does. So uh, modular uh, solid mechanics uh, in Sofa and not only you saw solvers and so on. Uh, it's it's gonna be it could be interesting to 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 start uh, digging into this uh, this plugin altogether. Um, is there anyone else that wants to, to, to say a word? I know that François uh, François Lecomte uh, you you did some 
to do some work around so far. Would you like to say a word, uh, a word about it, uh, Remy, maybe? Do not uh, yeah, yeah I don't. I don't have much to say. Um, ah, even if it's a, a one sentence, it's always good to hear. <laughs> so I, I worked on the, um, a bit on the sofa plugin uh, volumetric X-ray rendering, which, uh, in short, um, from CT data produce uh, a radio simulated radiological image, mm -hmm. and uh, I worked mainly to use it uh, for myself uh, and yes i did not modify uh, much of the things in it okay so okay. I, I also i made a, a simple binding for it yeah that's a uh, piece of trouble when, when, when you are when you're making bindings guy okay, never hesitate you know uh, even you know the, the, there was jean nicolas who did that you know a whole tutorial filming in, himself during a presentation he did but even if you are doing a small a very very small binding just for one component one small component if possible open source do not hesitate to record yourself and make videos like that it's actually really when you know how to do it it's quite quick but it's super useful for people who who would like to bind their own component and especially their own functions uh, if it's uh, specific to, to, to one specific code. So thank you very much, uh, François, for, for the feedback. Yeah. Thank you. I, uh, I have a, a, yeah. a very quick topic uh, to, I mean, propose as a potential discussion in the coming days. Also because I heard what Etienne was saying earlier on. Uh, in the deep physics project, we wanted to be able to have uh, also a, a bit more scientific visualization of some of the uh, things that are going on because uh, sometimes we want to show more things than just the visual or the collision models and uh, we found a couple of interesting um, uh, python packages the one that Alban started to use with Robin like uh, uh, just maybe a week ago is called VEDO v -E -D -O, if I remember correctly but the bottom line is, you know, I, I think there is some uh, potential interest from uh, more people about, you know, some Python-based scientific visualization, which seems quite an easy deal when you look at what we've been able to do in a very short amount of time. Uh, but there are some limitations. Basically, all of these visualization um, strategies, they open a separate window from so far so you cannot really interact with it so it's it's not an interactive viewer at least not in the sense of our uh, GUI in so far and maybe it's a discussion to have also with Fred mm -hmm. and others about you know what what we could do yeah. to maybe have an interactive python based viewer that's you know that would meet the need of you know, people, but it doesn't have to be the one we're using. It just, you know, if in your Python code you want to use some uh, additional visualization based on uh, Matlib, most likely, um, how can we make it uh, closely integrated with um, SOFA? I mean, mm -hmm. in the sense that it's not just, you know, you output something and it renders it, but you could interact and, you know, capture mouse events and things like that. that that'd be really cool, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, if people at least are interested in this topic. Um, yeah, um, yeah th this, this could definitely fall into yeah, this uh, afternoon discussion where there will be a room dedicated again on, on, the, on the coupling so far machine learning could be a part as well and there is uh, other sessions tomorrow to, tomorrow morning there is a uh, two sessions in a row from from 9 30 to 12 uh, to noon 30 where uh, i think fred was actually intending to participate so it could be definitely the, the good time uh, for that but yeah uh, fred maybe if you can yeah keep, keep that in mind so that when tomorrow you 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 attend to the discussion yeah python based mm -hmm. yeah cool add it to discussion slot okay Great. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hugo, just, yeah, yeah. it will really be it will be one sentence really. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I worked on this. Uh, I worked mainly on a side project for Sofa. Uh, it was like just using a, a pixel-based uh, cloud streaming for for being able to 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 
launch and see a simulation, uh, let's say, a sofa simulation from the web uh, and interacting with it, but here in no haptic, just uh, sending some some control data to, to the simulation on the server. It is kind of working, let's say it's working, but uh, we we saw late, maybe too late, that uh, renting uh, servers is very expensive. <laughs> so we are not a million billionaires. So uh, like this project is that it's made, it's standby, standby mode, but we will continue a bit on this side and I hope that we can at least manage better the way we we rent the, the servers. So it's definitely not on the soft side that we are continuing, but let's say we maybe have some things to. Yeah, it could be it could be interesting if anyone has uh, if anyone else has uh, some experience in you know uh, streaming on the web, uh, you know through uh, so having cloud simulations for for, for instance, uh, do not hesitate to. To, to get in touch with Remy. And I think you're going to work as well on, on some uh, op optimizing some capsule collision, right? It's what you, what you wrote us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I will really look at what is doing Alex and, and maybe, yes, we can. Uh, I, I, I saw that there, is, there was some, some kind of soft code about capsule collision in so far, but it's on some classes that are not used anymore. And I reached this code and it's not working perfectly. So I'm hoping like I could optimize that and then share it afterwards. Great, cool. Thanks, uh, thanks, Ali. Um, so, yeah, I noticed so Remy, so Sukraj, I don't know if Sukraj is in the area, but Penyu and Aine, uh, so Aine, I, I think you are AK, I guess. Uh, you guys are. Okay, can you tell us maybe in one one sentence as well what you are doing right now in Sofa? And I, I see both of you are for the moment muted. Aine and Penyu, do not say to unmute. Pedro, uh, please Pedro in the area as well. Yeah, Penyu, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, sorry, I didn't prepare any PowerPoint. No, no, but just just like you know, in one sentence, telling it's for okay. people to know to know you because I know what you're doing, but it's for others to know a bit what uh, what you do. Okay, uh, I created a, a plugin uh, to simulate the, the needle insertion and the suture simulation. Uh, currently, I uh, created um, a, a contact uh, constraint to uh, generate different uh, constraints. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, another one is uh, about the sliding constraint. But uh, right now, mm, uh, I can compile compile uh, the plugin successfully. But uh, the haptic force I get is too too strong. I think it uh, has something related with the uh, uh, LCP constraint solver. So I'm still working working on it. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Bruno, I, I, I see that uh, Bruno Pierre, uh, I won't be able to mimic the, the Quebec, uh, Quebec accent, but uh, uh, Bruno, I, I don't know if you can, uh, if, if you can say a word about your Current use and, and maybe so if you dev some stuff uh, around so far on your on your end. Yes, uh, so uh, basically I'm working on the, my master's project, uh, which is a, si a simulation of uh, laparoscopic uh, surgery, and uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm uh, I'm building a custom plugin to uh, uh, to uh, to. Uh, Link so far with the custom uh, haptic arm uh, that we made uh, uh, at my university. Okay, and you're making so uh, some 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 code to couple uh, physics from so far, and 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 it's for haptic or it's it's for it's a robot that, that a robotic arm that you are having. Yes, exactly. It's for haptic. Uh, haptic. Basically okay. It's it, it, it's a. Uh, it's it looks like uh, it it looks a lot like a, a geomagic touch. Uh, uh, plugin. Oh, if you if you if you're doing the the the, the new version, basically the new generation of uh, geomagic, uh, please keep us updated. Uh, 
I think there would be many, many people interested in testing your, uh, testing your work. Great. Uh, thank you. And, and yeah, do not hesitate to keep us, uh, so right, if there is anything else, do not hesitate to, to add it and, and to keep us posted because it's really of interest for, for the community. Thank you, Bruno. Uh, and I think Martin, Martin, uh, uh, we saw pull requests from you regularly, uh, Martin Stones, uh, for for uh, fixing a few things in SoFi. Yeah, yeah, have you? Yeah, can you tell a bit people what you are up to and doing uh, around SoFi? Yeah, I, I just uh, can you hear me? Can you can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, very well. Sorry, oh, okay, I, I, perfect. I, I, I jumped out uh, and I came back. Yeah, yeah. We, we could hear you perfectly. So sorry. Yeah. Okay, I just started working with SOFA because I'm engaged in other projects on other fields. So this year will be just passive, I would say, just taking part in organizing soft issues. That means real code issues and not so much in mathematics and simulation. Thanks. Any, anyway, as, as we are already telling you and as we already discussed a bit on, on, on GitHub as well to, together and with other devs, you know, it's really uh, all those fixes and, and, and analysis of, of, of the software code and cleaning it is always a must, uh, must and welcome. So thanks for your uh, last uh, six months contribution. It's, uh, it's well, uh, very much appreciated. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for working. Uh, if there is anything else, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I can maybe conclude and maybe with the, I'm going to make it very, very short uh, with the presentation of Damien. Upload a presentation here. Da -da 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 -da. Cleaning, yeah, there, there it is. Yeah, uh, it's, and it's, it's, it should conclude. And again, do not hesitate to unmute yourself if any anything has been missed, but uh, it's the last work that has been somehow performed in the last six months around so far, outside from the roadmap, and then we'll talk about the roadmap. It's cleaning the inclusion graph of so far. That's a work made by Damien Marshall, which is a, a, a research engineer working at CNRS, which is a research institute in France. And I'm gonna present on his behalf uh, the, the the, his work is again in a jury uh, all those days, so he can't, he can't be among us, uh, unfortunately. So why cutting uh, the dependency graph? Why cleaning this, dep this include graph? First, because of the compilation time, that's something which is bothering Damien a lot. Uh, uh, architectural dependencies are also super hard to track due to those messy includes. And it makes all the refactoring and cleaning of the code base that also will present Fred a bit later on, super complicated. So what he did, uh, what Damien did, uh, is that he refactored some of the core classes, data, node, link, uh, and that, that's the first part. And he's also developing what is called an opaque API for, uh, for, um, uh, for avoiding those, uh, those inclusion, uh, e inclusion issues. About those opaque API, so that's a short example here that you can see on the on the bottom here uh, for make in the class uh, uh, mechanical params, and you'll see that he's using uh, he's using now uh, forward declarations that will hide all the internal detail uh, of of an object and therefore cl cleaning uh, and lightening the the uh, the the include uh, the include uh, dependencies between files, and still I mean this. Opac API is existing, but you can still uh, any anyway uh, use the transparent API, uh, API of SOFA. So that's something that will clean a lot. All the yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, I, know, I think it was uh, a pull request uh, that Younes added, but something else. Sorry. Uh, so um, still on this uh, on this work on SOFA that that Damien accomplished, and I think it's going to be uh, the the last part of the feedback he gave us. It's investigated the compilation speed up still i mean cleaning the includes is one part and he tried also some uh, approaches like pch precompiled headers mechanism is so uh, small but uh, small speed up uh, uh, but still a speed up uh, however he tried also the unity build implementation and and there no no speed all that all to investigate a bit further so in conclusion, that was uh, yeah, super cool initiative, cleaning, cleaning includes. I think 
something which is important that, that, we, that we will discuss that with him also later on is the need to pursue and complete really this, uh, this cleaning up to the end to have a full opaque API, to have a full cleaning of what is started, especially data, link, classes that are super important. So if you have any question, uh, I invite you to, to join us, you know, every Wednesday morning, 10, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, CET, so that you can uh, chat, chat with us and Damien about those, uh, those developments. All right, I'm going to get back to the presentation. To the uh, Alexandre would like to, Alexandre would yeah. like to, to speak about what he is doing with the uh, Indemo University in Soft Robotics. So, Alexandre, if you want to yeah, speak, go ahead, yeah. it's your turn. Can you, yeah, can you unmute yourself, Alexandre? Uh, doo -doo -doo, there you are. I mean, I can make you presenter if you'd like, but you need first to unmute yourself. So since we have a lot of Alexander here, I think it's Alexandre Cole, right? Yeah, no problem. Uh, sorry, no, I was just wanted to uh, quickly, I, I won't present uh, anything um, um, on my computer, but just, uh, so, um, so I'm part of soft system group uh, at the Number University uh, with Adam Stoke, uh, uh, as my supervisor for my PhD, um, doing soft robotics. So I took an interest in so far recently and a few people in my groups are looking at it as well to see how uh, the formation of, of mesh and as well for us, which is very important, like um, sort of a, a string actuation. Uh, the, the only issue is um, we are not computer scientists. Uh, we like uh, mechanical engineering or uh, so it's the, the, the best um, uh, uh, tutorial is very important, like for troubleshooting is like a big uh, part of the work and keep up to speed. Uh, so even like uh, you, the UX sometimes it's a bit uh, difficult to approach if, you, if we're not really, uh, uh, um, uh, we unfortunately don't have the same knowledge in, in, in in, uh, in computer, in computer than, uh, sorry, including that what you have. So uh, it's great if you have like a, a central place where all the tutorials are located, which which the community is, is fantastic for that. And uh, uh, and yeah, so uh, the more the clearer the information, uh, the better it will be, and makes us easier to, to work. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic work and. Uh, really really looking to use it more in the future so just wanted to say yeah th thank you for for the feedback alexander i think we yeah that, that's that, that there will be sessions about uh, as you as you're proposing actually uh, user experience uh, uh, i'll let again guillaume confirm the the, the schedule sorry guillaume um uh i think it's already this afternoon uh, uh, we'll, uh we'll see yeah, yeah, because it's a, it's a roadmap project. Okay, so. okay, cool. And and you're most welcome to, to participate, Alexandre, and, and something else that you're most welcome to, to do, and that's uh, here for your own good, is, you know, never, as I'm always saying, never stay alone if you're stuck in the implementation of something. I, we, there is always a way to f either connect to, connect you with uh, some of the experts of one specific, specific field, or at least, you know, accompany you in the developments that you need, uh, you know, if it's a development of your, a new mechanical law, since you're mechanical engineers, I could uh, I could help you and dig. We, we could help you and dig with you, you know, in the Caribou plugin, for instance, or in the mechanical models of SOFA anyway. But there is always ways. Never stay alone in that kind of uh, in that case uh, kind of cases. But your feedback of how to improve. First steps. It's uh, uh, would be definitely a, a, a great in, in, a great input for us. Fantastic. Thank you for thank you for jumping in. And you're French, Alexandre, or? Uh, yeah. Yes, I am. Uh, okay. I was I was confused by uh, by your Alexandre and not an Alexander in in the UK. I was what uh, what's happening? Okay. Thank you very much, Alexandre. And nice meeting you. Uh, at this uh, STC, uh, so yeah, we'll we'll talk again about this uh, this topic. Um, we'll, we can make maybe a short coffee break just just so that I mean 
Uh, I did not have the time to do it. Maybe you, you did already, but take your time for uh, making yourself a coffee and we can maybe meet, let's say in five, can we, yeah, we can say five minutes so that we can restart at 10, 1040. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Okay. Okay, that should work. Okay, oh, yeah, I wrote 45. Uh, yeah, let's give us some. Uh, shall, shall we do 45, guys? You? Five for you? Yeah, okay, 45. Yeah. Let's take let's take the, the time to make a real good coffee. <laughs> see you see you in a few seconds. If you have any question, uh, where is the time, uh, Guillaume? <laughs> uh, yeah, is. I, I have read it, I believe, but uh, we don't really need it. I guess. It's, yeah, it's Eric. Okay. I can I can, uh, I can show it. Uh, if, you want, <laughs> if you want me to flex with my timer, I can just. <laughs> I can do it. Okay. Wait. Where are we? See you in 10 minutes, guys. 10 minutes. Tic tac. OK. Wow. <laughs> and in the meantime, if there is any, any question, if you'd like to wonder about, if you're wondering about, you know, is, is my topic going to discuss or under, understanding stuff about the, the agenda, just unmute yourself when there is someone here or jump, uh, uh, drop a question in the, in the chat uh, anytime. See you in 10 minutes. Thank you, Guillaume. So I was uh, I was answering uh, Nick in the in the chat in the ST SSA eleven chat here on Gitter uh, about the you know the the module feature. Something C we are we are for the moment as as Fred just wrote, we are a C plus plus seventeen compatible. Uh, it might evolve, um, I don't know if it would be for the next release, but maybe in uh, 2022. Uh, that's maybe something we would, uh, we would uh, be heading for. And the, all the modules feature or the concept features as well from C20, it's something that Damien, among others, but Damien uh, especially, Fred as well, are super uh, in interested in, and it's maybe something we would, uh, we would uh, start uh, digging into because uh, could, could, it could have, I mean, several C20 um, uh, features would have super strong impact in, uh, in SOFA because uh, it, would, uh, it would clean or help or simplify the code quite significantly. So that's uh, things we are looking at. Uh, all right, thank you, Guillaume, for the reminder. Again, if there is any other, uh, any other question, do not hesitate to, 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 draw, to drop in. And as Nick is already doing with Fred, to chit chat about other topics uh, directly in the, in the chat, in the Gitter, Gitter chat. All right, so that's, we discussed about what occurred in the last six months, but on your end, basically on things, especially that were uh, on your end, not scheduled six months ago. Now we'll see what you and others did, but that was actually discussed uh, uh, six months ago in November, we, and we decided uh, to work and to progress. We commit, we committed uh, to really work on first Sofa Python, second. Then uh, there is the whole project uh, that Fred is uh, Frederic is actually working on called Sofa NG for next gen. It's actually a modularized version of Sofa. The whole core of Sofa being modularized, simplified, cleaned, so that's related as well with this cleaning of headers, but uh, modularization, modularization of Sofa. Third, the work mostly of Guillaume, working on packaging, continuous integration, continuous development. That's, again, topics that six months ago we said it's gonna, it's, there are going to be changes on those topics. And last but not least, topologies, and that's work that Eric did uh, on his end for the last six months, and it will be a good transition just right after about the discussions, and it's going to be the step uh, the step after eleven thirty this morning about what's coming uh, what's coming up for the next six months, and we'll see that after eleven thirty. So about the roadmap, we decided six months ago we're gonna. Um, uh, I think I'm gonna start. Uh, oh, the slide changed. It's uh, it's nicely. Uh, nicely uh, ticked here. Um, uh, the, 
it's it's the first task that we decided was about Sofa Python 3. I don't know how many of you were not here six months ago, but six months ago, we realized that Sofa Python 3, that was a plugin made by the Defrost team, so in, in especially Daniel, Bruno, and all the team from Christian pushed for this Sofa Python 3. But there was actually many tasks that were remaining to really include it and to include it in a proper, clean way into SOFA. So there have been a huge work by, led, led by Jean-Nicolas uh, from Mimesis and also by Guillaume, uh, which is just next to me, um, on the integration of SOFA Python 3 into SOFA. So the first part was that uh, it had to be first connected to SOFA. It, has, it, it had to be, the, the, Guillaume will mention that, uh, we, we now have also the continuous integration that does include the plugins of Python 3 with SOFA, so everything is now tested in, in SOFA. Um, they, they had a lot of cleaning, especially on the CMake part that was needed to use the macro, uh, the, the macro CMake macro from SOFA, so that it's all compatible and, and all, I would say, homogeneous. Uh, take into account all the refactoring also that, that occurred in SOFA, inside SOFA Python. And I would say, not most importantly, but for users, we had to, to have so the CI that uh, Guillaume worked on and who says CI says, says as well the test. So Jean-Nicolas did a, a lot of tests uh, on, on Sofa Python and adding documentation polls, that's again a work that Jean-Nicolas pushed uh, really strongly, uh, strongly on. It's adding examples so that you can see how to use so, uh, Sofa from a Python environment, how, how you can run Python script in Sofa. And now, as you can, as you as you, uh, may, you might already know, it's even possible to create components from Python, fully written in Python, using the the Sofa Python three interface that comes with the Sofa Python three plugin. Okay. So what I would say, and it's a bit anticipating, but never mind. It's really keep in mind about this Sofa Python three that it will be, it is already now actually, the Python, the by default Python plugin. So if you have some Python scene in your plugins, do not forget to upgrade them for being compatible with Sofa Python 3. So that's this roadmap tasks run between, I would say, December, so right, right after the last technical committee up to, I would say, early February. Uh, and still uh, there have been some, some updates uh, on, on, on fixes, scenes, and, and so on afterwards. But it has been two, three months of, of, uh, of strong developments, especially, as I said, I, I don't know if I'm forgetting someone, but uh, uh, yeah, it was mostly, uh, mostly Jean-Nicolas, uh, uh, Guillaume, Fred as well, and who was involved a bit. So yeah, that's, that is, that's it for the roadmap tasks of Python 3. I think we are basically done with this topic. There was one point proposing a setup.py install for, but uh, I, I, I'm not sure it's, uh, it's uh, that, that meaningful. And uh, yeah, m now actually everyone is, is actually using it. Most of the, of the developers are now actually using Sofa Python 3. So if you have any question about it, do not hesitate to ask. And if there is no... Maybe, maybe yeah. you can just uh, get a bit into... Uh... The, the 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 issue of upgrading your plugin with python 3 because uh, so we decided to really focus on python 3 and in the last in the last release we uh, we joined soft robots with python 3 and stlib the full stack uh, from defrost in the release in the binaries and we had uh, trouble with users on the forum uh, coming with issues concerning the uh, STL part, uh, dep depending on the Python 3, but the, the, the migration of all the components in STL was uh, and is still uh, not complete. So there are uh, missing features uh, and we had, unfortunately, to say to those users, to keep using uh, Python 2 uh, to have all the features uh, that were implemented in stlib with Python 2 and not yet with Python 3. 
So it is very, very, very important now that we are pushing uh, hard on Python 3 that you upgrade your plugins, uh, specifically if those plugins are the base of others, uh, like STD, for example. It is very important to upgrade them uh, if we want, uh, if we don't want all the users to be uh, lost. Uh, on that, maybe Younes, I, I see, uh, I see you connected. Uh, I don't know if you have, uh, if you have some some info about the, about it. If you know, it is now STD fully compatible with Surface Python three or not, or you know, if you have some fully, fully not yet, but we are working on that. And the thing is, some plugins for uh, for some component, the name just changed. Like the last time we are talking about the syntax and everything, then maybe the thing is also when you have this kind of question, we are trying to resolve it directly. And when we see that someone wants to use some component and it's not change, it's not. Uh, I just try to work on it, or sometimes Olali or other member of the team, we just work on that directly to change it. And we have to merge. Also, we have some branches. Well, or advanced, then we will try to put them on the master and everything. We are working on that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Every time we work on that. And, yeah. and as usual, if there is issues in, in those uh, upgrades of plugins and upgrades of especially of these example scenes, do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, there is a, I mean, obviously people of the community, users are, are, are coming to us for asking support. But I mean, even if you are developers and, and, yeah, and there is some, some support, support needed, let us know. But yeah, that was uh, indeed yeah, uh, uh, good to maybe to insist on that, really, because at the end, it would be nice to have a fully homogeneous Python 3 depending uh, SOFA plus plugins who only, uh, who only rely on, on, the, on the same Python 3 uh, version. Okay. Hello, it's, Ma it's Martin here. Uh, yeah. One command on Python 3, there are definitely tools in Python for uh, Supporting that change, check in a Python 2 module uh, for Python 3 compatibility, and I think there are also automatic tools for upgrading, but I'm not so sure about this. You mean automatic tools to move um, things from Python, Python 2 to Python 3? That's what you mean? Uh, ah, you're, you're muted again, so, sorry, yeah. Um. Sorry, yeah, I'm saying so. I have to check this. I will okay, give okay. a command later on. Okay, Put and, it in the chat. Uh, we could actually create some some short videos showing how to how to update a scene uh, from from Sofa Python two to Sofa, Sofa Python three. Again, yeah, the, the the thing is just uh, to to answer uh, what you just said, Martin. Uh, uh, it's actually not so uh, not not hard and actually easy to move. Uh, the Python 2 script to Python 3, but it's not so easy to move a Sofa Python 2 a scene or even a, a, a binding to Sofa Python 3 because it's a computer API that is different. So it's not just Python code that is moving from the version 2 to version 3. It's I think the main problem is three parts, then that's what we are working on. The main problem is the prefabs we already have in STD. That's what we are working on. Yeah. Yeah, for the case of STD, definitely. Yeah, yeah. that would. And the, 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 I mean, once this change will be done, that's never going to occur again. I mean, that's just due to this. Uh, I won't say unique, but it's a quite rare change of uh, of uh, Python versions. Version, Python version. Sorry, uh, that we that we went through. So yeah, it's still a bit painful, but uh, we are almost there. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Ines. Uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, and uh, there was a last reminder before moving to the second part that we'll be talking about the SOFA next gen. It's just a reminder, the 2012 was really the last version supporting SOFA Python 2.7. I think it's important to make the switch. Uh, we discussed that uh, We discussed that again uh, those last days and last meetings, um, dev meetings. It's, it's really th something we, we'd like to not, it's not that we want to drop the support super quickly, but just it needs to be done so that people really do do move uh, uh, do move to uh, to Sofa Python three. So just a reminder: Sofa Sofa V twenty twelve. So the release of last December was the last supporting the 
be uh, the, the cost of app item, which is the 2.7 compatible. All right. The next session will be uh, will be the presentation of Fred talking about. I'm going to upload the slides for you, Fred, here, and you should be able to take the presenter. Uh, I guess, yeah, perfect. Uh, just a short introduction. So, for those who do not know Sofa Next Gen, so uh, Sofa NG, you 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 actually do have the link uh, in the slides, but I'm going to add you also in the in the chat of the issue, which is reporting all the changes, all the projects uh, that that um, that Fred is leading, Sofa NG. Again, modularizing the whole core of Sofa. It's it will affect you all definitely. And we apologize for that, but it's for your own good. It's actually for our own good, and it's for the good of Sofa, so that you can later on make Sofa the Sofa you need, the Sofa you want. So that's that's the the way really we we are going uh, going to. I'll let you uh, I'll let you the the mic, uh, Fred, and I'll let you explain. We we can't hear you. You're, you're still muted, right? We, we still can't, can't hear you, Fred. I see you're unmuted, but, but uh, it's maybe the mic, uh, mic source. I, I, I was also thinking that you were actually pretty silent for uh, since uh, since the beginning of the meeting. I'm I'm used to hear your sweet voice, but uh, okay. Do not hesitate to just reconnect, uh, and I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you uh, give you the mic again. All right. A small F5, and we're going to get started. Yeah, yeah perfect. I just had to reboot my <laughs> browser. I don't know why. It's Chrome, so it's not my fault. <laughs> anyway, so thank you, Hugo. Uh, let's play, uh, go fast on that one. So you can see, like uh, Hugo said, the uh, discussion of the Sofa uh, work fast. So divided, uh, it's been two or three STC now. So it's been divided in uh, four big tasks. So. The first one was the uh, one I worked the most this uh, last uh, six months. So it was uh, involved in cleaning of Sofa framework. So as you, I mean, the older guys like me could see that it was a bit a cesspool, especially because uh, there was a lot of interdependencies between uh, core modules like helper, default type in core. So like uh, I wrote here, uh, some, some, I mean, logically you would expect that uh, so Fiber was uh, the one uh, the, on the top most of the dependency hierarchy, and then default type and then core and simulation core. But it was not true that some, sometimes uh, so Fiber was uh, including stuff from uh, so far default type and some stuff from uh, so far core, and maybe some simulation core as well, actually. I mean, everything was mixed uh, all together, so you couldn't do uh, independent modules at yeah. the time. And, and, and here, for, for people, you see it's really the former architecture. For those who do not know uh, a lot the architecture of Sofa, it's really, uh, as written in the slide, the old V2006 uh, architecture. And you will see how it change, changes. Yeah. Sorry, if I... yeah, thank you. And that's all. What I've done is like, to split all the dependencies, move class into uh, consistent modules. So that's why we decided to, uh, to create several uh, Sub module, let's say, if we compare with the last, last time. So, the most, the top most is a Sofa config is like uh, including all the CMake uh, configuration and the macros. Sofa type with a vector, I mean, really the most uh, primitive uh, types. And then geometry, topology, helper, I mean, the classical helper default type in core. So, now all the, the modules are independent between them. I mean, the one uh, Sofa type, for example, only needs Sofa config. Uh, Sofa core just needs uh, the one on the top of, of, of him. But now, Elper doesn't need any more default type, doesn't need any more core and everything. So now, because of this, like uh, Nick was speaking on the on the guitar, we will be able to uh, switch to the C20 uh, modules uh, thingy when we will uh, support it. So now everything is clean. So this as you can expect, is a bit breaking for a lot of people. But what I try, I mean, really know other guys, we try to do the most compatible uh, uh, as we could. So that's why I created a, a module like called Sofa Compat, which is merely a 
a redirect uh, headers. I mean, header in the previous location, redirecting to the new, uh, new location. So for example, if you do sofa slash uh, default type slash vec point dot h, it will automatically redirect you to sofa type vec dot h and warning you at the compilation. So basically, your code, your your actual plugin should be like ninety five percent still uh, uh, compatible with the new architecture. I mean, if we accept your warning in the, uh, in the compilation, you may stumble on the some compilation error with uh, some namespace ambiguous namespace, namespace or anything like that. But we've created some issues on the GitHub, if you see in the issue parts, how to solve quickly the problem you can, uh, you could uh, uh, stumble with. So like I said, for now, I mean, until uh, 2006, it's 90% 90 uh, finished. Just need some cleaning and uh, to pass by everything with a new architecture. So it's mostly, uh, almost mostly finished. And uh, about find out about what you what you just wrote. Uh, you said there was a deprecated uh, um, uh, deprecated uh, compact uh, sofa compact here. Can yeah. you tell a bit about the warning? So it, there should be warnings appearing uh, also for people that did not update their code, right? Like, like I said, yeah, this uh, sofa compact uh, it's act enabled by default, and if you include the views header like uh, sofa default type vector dot h. It will warn you at the completion time, but it will still work. I mean, it will do the, your, the job for you, like include the right, uh, the right header and everything. But and your plugin will still compile. But it will warn you that in one or two releases, this uh, redirection will be uh, disabled, and you will need to update your code anyway. So the sooner the better, for sure. So if you have the warning, but try to to modify your code. But for now, all the I mean all. 95% of the plugins should still be compiled with the old uh, code. Well, I mean, the headers. Thank you. Uh, NG2, so yeah, that was uh, almost finished uh, last STC. So it was all to modernize all the uh, existing libraries like uh, Sofa based uh, collision, based visual and everything. So now all are uh, CMake module, uh, CMake package, and, and everything. So it should be. Uh, as impedant as uh, possible. That's sometimes it's not because of uh, work I'm doing later for the NG3. I'm doing now. So NG3 is involving how to dispatch all the current file into a new hierarchy. So you can see the, I mean, the, the dispatching has been uh, uh, agreed between the different uh, engineers uh, present at the SOFADEV meetings. So we are now at the eighth uh, occurrence of the, of the dispatching. You can have a look at the link and you can put your remarks if you, are, if you, don't, you still don't agree with us. So for now, uh, I've done a proof of concept of this new hierarchy with the GitHub uh, APDF project. It's merely uh, wrapping the SOFA code and this, I mean, with a CMake file, you see. So you don't need to modify SOFA to have the new hierarchy to, to work. So feel free to have a look and the same. Uh, tell me uh, what's your agreement or your disagreement. For, I have a, a file into, into, into this repository. I have some question, like, is it uh, good to do like this or like that? So don't. Don't hesitate to to put your remarks into into it. So for now, uh, the current set is this is working. I can run the uh, I can run the can you see also scene without problem. It's not working with OpenGL because I didn't want to bother with OpenGL for now. But I mean, this is trigger. So just now, this uh, task well, for the next STC. I will present later. But we need an agreement on how to dispatch, and also. Uh, there is a lot of, I mean, while doing this uh, dispatching, I saw a lot of trivial and non-trivial uh, dependency between uh, classes. So that's my work for now. I'm doing the most as uh, possible before the 2006, and I will continue for the 20, uh, 20 toil. And the last, I know this is, uh, I see a bit small, but it's the current uh, organization, what we agreed on. So you can see now it's really, uh, by uh, a feature and not by some topic or something like that. 
so it will be easier for people to find where is uh, located what. So I, uh, I invite I you to, to look to at the repository. Yeah. Guys, do not hesitate to react, uh, you know, either directly in the in the GitHub chat. There will there should be a discussion since Fred will carry on on this uh, on this topic hmm. uh, this, right, yeah. uh, th this afternoon. So do not hesitate. And if you have uh, if you have uh, some questions about you know you know for instance when uh, did did the did all this dispatch already started uh, did already this dispatch already start in so far or not? Fred? Uh, dispatch itself no. Yeah. I mean, this uh, wrapper is doing like, if we were doing the dispatch, it would be like that. But exactly. the code itself, I don't modify the code itself. Because yeah. what we plan to do, but that is the 2012. But what we plan to do is once we agreed, we will use the recipe made by uh, Damien and uh, Guillaume to really physically move the files into the directory like that. But before doing all the, the hard works, so we just do like uh, prototypes and uh, what the name, a dry, uh, dry, uh, dry test. And at, at the end, if when everybody agrees, we will do the, the dispatch itself. Great, thanks. And the last, uh, last task, it's a bit stalled because there is a lot of problem for occurring, but we wanted to like, uh, re not remove, but move uh, external plugin to their own uh, repository, still supporting or not them. But this is a bit stuck because uh, because of the Sofa Python Sofa Python two three problem, and also because we needed to reorganize our workflow with the external plugins. So this was more or less uh, solved by Guillaume uh, two, a few weeks ago. But we still need to make it uh, uh, working because actually I think only one Pierre tried this uh, workflow. I think it was uh, Damien, uh, Jean Nicolas. But yeah. So uh, we need. I need to. We need to really define uh, really well the workflow with the external plugins, and that's it. Thank you, Fred. Is there any question about this? Uh, uh, we, we we have a bit of time for for questions, so that's why uh, that's why I'm I'm asking. Or if there is any reaction about what has been presented. Again, just I'm insisting a bit on it, but it's really because it's going to affect every one of you. And actually, each developer will face the changes done by Fred. But just to recall, it's really, really to uh, to at the at the end of the journey. And uh, is is your work with Sofa? Is the integration of Sofa? Is the fact that you will be able to compile only the version of Sofa you need and not more? Okay. But actually, because this will be for sure a task for the roadmap, uh, I invite you to go to the. Uh, a room for the sofa ng if you have any remark or you want to help mm -hmm. or anything like that i'm mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. merely presented what i've done before but there's a lot of stuff to do still for now so it's not too late for to interview maybe, maybe we could just add uh, uh, for, for everyone uh, to make an idea uh, about the calendar uh, in a release point of view uh, fred uh, so for example for this one for this release with uh, this uh, upcoming 21.6 will contain all this stuff that uh, has just been presented. So there, there will be all the warnings and things like that in your plugin that will appear if you upgrade to 21.6 and you still are including the old things. So there will be uh, it, it may be, I guess, a good uh, first step for you to uh, go towards the new architecture. Uh, so simply by uh, uh, upgrading your sofa to 21.6 when it will be uh, released. And maybe Fred, a word about the next steps uh, in terms of uh, releases, what it, will, what, it will, what it will contain and when it will be finished. Uh -oh. <laughs> Fully, uh, I mean, my, this, I, I mean, I was thinking we will speak about uh, that in the next uh, part, in 2012, not maybe not now, because I was speaking what we've done now, right, just before. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay, but uh, thank you, Fred. And, and again, to, to recap, the both the NG1 part and the NG2 part that Fred worked on and that uh, Fred uh, actually uh, completed, 
will be integrated into the next uh, into the next uh, V2106, so the release coming up in uh, in June uh, in a few weeks. Thanks, Fred. Uh, we're we're going to move to the third uh, topic of the roadmap. That was actually uh, I'm trying to find. Oh, you, you you will share your screen, right, uh, Guillaume? Uh, no, I can use the the link to, to put okay. it back. Uh, I'll put it back here. There. And I can... Oh yeah. Okay. There you are. Okay. Cool. So yeah, the, the it's a bit ugly, but so the the blue ones are done, the empty ones are not done, and the dotted ones. That's really, it's not really clear, but it's things that are started uh, and on, ongoing. So this uh, it will be in uh, two slides. This one is uh, presenting what objectives uh, we decided to put on the roadmap at, at, the, at the last the last STC. And on the on the next slide, uh, there are some more stuff that I did. Uh, and uh, that are in this uh, in this packaging slash CI slash CD uh, project. So for the 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 the, the, the objectives that we that we uh, that we decided on the last STC, uh, the benchmarking CI it's not really a, an easy uh, thing to do, but now at least we track timings, so we can uh, we can see when. Uh, some tests are taking uh, anomaly a long time to execute. So we can now, now detect some uh, anomalies in the timings, uh, in the builds and the tests. Um, the, second, uh, the second one is not started, but uh, it's really something that uh, popped out of my mind, actually, because it's not a, a, hard, thing to, a hard thing to do. Uh, and the last three are somehow linked um, because uh, the, the, the big answer to the last three uh, objectives that we, that we discussed in last STC, uh, the, 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 the big idea behind is to be able to build plugins in the plugins repositories when all the plugins will be uh, each one in its own repository, of course. So it's a it's a very long term idea. But uh, the question is because we are now starting to have more and more plugins in their own uh, repository. Uh, how do we work with this uh, with this configuration? So so far, and the plugins in different repositories. And how do we help the plugin owners to bootstrap a, a, a continuous integration to test SOFA uh, and their plugin uh, in their own repository? So the idea behind this uh, is GitHub Action. Here, oh, I can't uh, make some nice uh, here. And here, um, so as started by uh, Jean-Nicolas in the Caribou plugin, no, in the Sofa Python 3, Sofa Python 3 <laughs> plugin, um, the use of GitHub Action will be the uh, preferred answer to the question, how do we work with uh, plugins in their own repository? So, Jean-Nicolas Jean did the first one and, uh, and he presented just before that he did it for the three platforms, uh, Linux, Mac, and, uh, and Windows. So he did the first, uh, a first step by creating the GitHub Actions that are fetching SOFA. So what is, what is happening is that uh, in SOFA we do nightly builds nightly binaries so they are uh, they, this is the, the cd part uh, continuous delivery every night there is a binary that is uh, that is generated it is not released it is not uh, uh, it is public but it is a bit hidden it is not an official release but it is usable uh, in github actions or in any other uh, ci 
uh, to build other stuff, so to build plugins. This is what Jean-Nicolas Jean used, and this is what we want to um, push for all the plugins that are going to, uh, to be created in the future out of SOFA. And for the ones that are in SOFA and that will go out of SOFA because it's also something that we want to uh, pursue. Uh, so this is in, in bold because uh, it's something that we started and that we are going really to push uh, for the next release. So using the GitHub Actions and moreover writing all the documentations to um, permit uh, people to bootstrap their own CI and CD with GitHub Actions in their plugins. And in my second slide, uh, so it's more about everything that I did around the, the, the continuous integration. So a lot of maintenance, like we said before, uh, set up in Python 3 to integrate SOFA Python 3 in the CI, making sure that both Python 2 and Python 3 can, uh, can live together um, because we still, we still are uh, building both. SOFA Python 2 and SOFA Python 3, but we will stop that and it will be easier to maintain. A lot of work around SOFA Python 3 for the release. So the, the, the biggest part was to make it integrable in the binaries. So we, are, we have, um, we have a, a, a system in SOFA when we build the binaries, we want to make sure that the plugins are uh, standalone plugins, even though, uh, even if we we build SOFA uh, with the binaries in the same time. So we want to make sure that when we build a plugin uh, in SOFA or out of SOFA, this plugin is standalone and is drag and drop all into the binaries. So that's uh, what was the main uh, the main challenge. Uh, around this SOFA Python 3 uh, uh, plugin. And that is the same challenge uh, now with uh, Caribou. So we have the, the, the same issue and uh, we really have to, uh, once this is, uh, is done, make sure that it will be clear for any upcoming plugin how to do, how to make sure my plugin is drag and droppable into sofa binaries uh, because it's done it's already done and easy for simple plugins but for the plugins that are actually projects embedding plugins like sofa python 3 and like caribou it's not really clear yet how to do that so that's why i have to put my hands in it uh, both times but we want to make it very clear uh, so that all the future uh, big plugins, uh, projects with plugins inside, can be, uh, once uh, installed, can be drag and drop into SOFA binaries. And uh, then you just load your plugin and it's working and it's uh, perfect. So it's a lot of uh, dependencies between library stuff and stuff like that. Uh, and also, as mentioned just before, this is a, a, a task that has just been uh, just been uh, finished and it's still test in testing phase, uh, improving the workflow with external plugins. So it's also joining the whole uh, working with external plugins in their own repositories, etc. Think. So we want to be able to both test the plugin in their own repository. So this is answered by the GitHub Action solution. But also, we want to be able to test um, in SOFA a change that is affecting the, the plugin. Uh, because when we test changes in SOFA, we are activating plugins even, even if they are not in SOFA. So we are fetching some external plugins to test them to make sure uh, they are still, uh, they are not broken. Uh, because even if the plugins are out of SOFA for uh, clean, cleaning reasons, we are still maintaining them. 
So we want to test them uh, from the outside and fetch them to test. So there was an issue uh, around this uh, this whole fetching uh, process when we when we create a change, uh, we create a pull request that is breaking somehow the external plugin, so that we so we have to create a pull request in the external plugin, and it was a bit a bit of a, a headache to solve. But now we have a workflow to make sure that when we pull request in so far is breaking something in an external plugin that we are maintaining. Um, there is a workflow to make sure that uh, you go to the external plugin, you fix that what, what has, been, uh, has been broken, and then you come back to Sofa to your pull request, and you can merge it, integrate it, and nothing is broken in the end. So both, both uh, Sofa and the external plugin are uh, are ensured to be uh, working at all times, and that's it. That was the big, uh, the biggest. Uh, so the, the the biggest to repeat it uh, last time. The biggest concern right now around packaging CI and CD is uh, making sure that external plugins are possible and are viable uh, in uh, in terms of uh, GitHub Actions for testing in terms of uh, workflow for the sofa side, and in terms of uh, integrability in the CMake, uh, CMake side, uh, to make sure that they are drag and, drag and droppable into sofa binaries. So that will, that, will be, uh, that will be also the main concern for the next steps, for the next release, because it's not, it's not done yet, it's not, it's not over. It's young. Uh, there were some questions in the meantime, but uh, especially you know for <laughs> GitHub Actions to create the own binaries of your plugin. Jean Nicolas mentioned you know uh, an example here on on his <laughs> plugin Caribou that he showed previously. So do not hesitate to give a, to give a look at a, a, to give a look at it. There was yeah. discussion about integration of uh, in these GitHub Actions uh, CUDA uh, uh, answered also by Fred. So apparently it can be. And there was two last uh, questions. Maybe uh, I can let you answer them in the in the chat for for Younes, uh, from Younes, Sorry, uh, uh, Guillaume. So I'll, I'll let you uh, I'll, I'll let you maybe uh, answer that. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna move maybe to the next uh, to the next and last roadmap tasks that was that was about topology. Topology. We are actually all using it. We are uh, all relying on it. And actually, very few or almost none of us is actually actively working in it uh, and there is one uh, uh, one man that they're uh, actually working into it in so far that's Eric uh, with his team uh, at Infinitech 3D and Eric maybe I can I can give you the I can give you the floor and I see your unmuting is perfect I can yes. make a presenter you should be able can to you hear me well yeah perfect uh, okay down the screen to be able to have a, a fourth button here appearing for sharing the screen and you should be able to to share any any window of your own desktop perfect starting yeah perfect it's working yeah yeah because i can't see anymore yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you if there is any, anything okay so i try to make it quick but it's uh huge topic in fact so i will just speak about uh, recent change or incoming changing uh, change in uh, topology in sofa so very quickly when we speak about topology inside sofa in fact we only speak about um, mesh topology because uh, most of the well, i think most of the classes that are using topology in sofa are using uh, mesh element like uh, edge, triangle, quad, etc. Uh, and um, so this is a quick overview of uh, the architecture of uh, the topology classes inside the core of SOFA, so it's at uh, the uh, root level. So we have first, uh, can you see my mouse? Yes, we do. Okay, sorry. So we have first a base object, so 
basic uh, thing from so far. And then we have a first class, which is topology. So in fact, topology uh, includes all the definition of uh, what we call a mesh element for the moment. Uh, then we have a different uh, component coming uh, behind, which one is uh, the best mesh topology. It's a big one, but everyone is using uh, in so far. In fact, it's the main API of, the, of uh, mesh topology to get access to, for example, the list of edges, triangles, uh, number of points, etc. Uh, we also have topology mapping to link two topologies together. Usually, uh, it's, uh, for example, the border of a uh, mesh, so the, for example, the edges of a triangular triangulation. Sorry. Um, and then we have uh, another guy which, which is based topology objects. So it's, in fact, just overwriting a base object to say, uh, okay, I'm adding a topology object inside the graph. Um, Behind, we have a mesh topology, which is made from base mesh topology. So, in fact, this one is uh, overriding the, the API of base mesh topology for what we call static topology. So, static topology means that we, uh, the mesh can move, but in fact, it can't change over the simulation. Um, and on the other side, we have uh, what we call the topology set. Uh, which is used for dynamic topology, so meaning that we can change the, the structure of the mesh. And so for that, we have a topology container, which is uh, the sibling of the mesh topology, but for dynamic uh, topology. And then on top of that, we have a topology modifier, which, which uh, contains all the methods, methods to perform topological change on the topology container. And then uh, we have what we call a geometry algorithm and a topology algorithm. Which are um, which we they have a more high level method to perform uh, mesh interaction, like for example uh, cutting into a mesh or uh, computing a path uh, along the mesh, etc. So this is what was in the last release. And this is what is uh, incoming, or at least uh, what I would like to, to propose for the next uh, change. So we still have the so we still have the base object, of course, and then we don't have any more the topology, but we have a base topology, which in fact will uh, just have the method to insert a, a component what we know but it's under the topology in the graph, but it's not uh, linked to a mesh. Um, then all the geometry and topology are moved to collection. So this is the work from. Uh, thread on the sofa NG. And um, so this, uh, it will be a set of classes where we can, you can define what is a, in the topology and geometry meaning, what is a, an edge, a triangle, etc. And then behind the base topology, we will have the base mesh topology. It's still the same, but so it, this guy will uh, really uh, define what is a, a mesh. And behind you still have the topology container mesh topology. This doesn't change. Um, on the border, we still have also the different other components. So we remove the base uh, object topology, which is doesn't we don't need it anymore. We also remove the topology algorithm because uh, everything is now inside the geometry algorithm to simplify. And the idea of using the base topology is that uh, we could put all. So it's something we need to discuss. But, uh, for example, we already discussed with uh, Jean-Nicolas and we say we could move all um, base method to, to, for example, to ask for uh, integration of our shape or over a mesh, no, I mean, over a shape. <laughs> and so the idea is that behind base topology, we could have, uh, for example, meshless uh, topology, or we could have also particle topology, etc. Then the second big topic is a topological change. Uh, so, for example, this is a simulation done by uh, Boom at uh, Fintech uh, 3D it's to simulate uh, tearing, uh, soft tissue tearing. And so, the idea is I will quickly present uh, what is uh, involved in, uh, so far. So, you have uh, the triangle set topology where you define the triangle edge point. Then, we have a FM force field. We also need the mass, 
we put some fixed constraint on top and we put also constant force field to uh, tear the tissue. And so how does it work inside the topology modification? Uh, inside each component, we create what we call a topology data. So for example, a triangle data, in fact, it's just uh, a buffer uh, which is linked to the set of triangle. It, it has the same size. And so the idea is, for example, you can store uh, a data per triangle. And you have the same for edge and point in the triangular FM force field. Um, for the mass, it's a little more complicated because the information of mass is linked to, at the same time, to the triangle edge and point. Because, for example, if you remove a triangle, you need to compute the mass. Uh, it's the same if you remove an edge or a point. Then for fixed constraint and constant force field, you only need uh, data over the different points. So, for example, the, the, the indices of points that are constrained or the indices of points where you put some force, forces. Um, so, very quickly, uh, in the old architecture of uh, the topological chain, you have data in green, which could be uh, sparse, full, or a subset. Then we use what we call topology handler to change uh, the data. And in the middle, there was also topo uh, topology engine. And so, uh, basically, how it works, uh, it worked in uh, the component. So you have your, for example, your triangulation. You create a FEM where you want to store information per triangle. So you create a triangle data. Then you have to create a data handler. So this is, if you create a FEM, you maybe so. Uh, if you if you look at some example, you maybe saw this guy and maybe didn't know what was it for. And the idea is this uh, handler uh, had all the method to update the the data. So for example, uh, if I'm computing, uh, for example, uh, the mass of my triangle, taking into account all the elements around me, I had to put a, a method saying, okay, if I remove a triangle, I need to update all my neighbor, if I add a triangle, etc. So when you created this data, it was creating a topology engine, uh, topology engine which was registering to the triangles. And so the idea is when you make a change, for example, if you remove a triangle, so the uh, a list of triangles is set to uh, what we call dirty in, in so far. It, it, it is propagating to the uh, topology engine. And these guys say, okay, I'm going to call uh, existing functions that are uh, linked to uh, the event and removing a triangle, triangle removed. And this guy then is updating the triangle data. Uh, this was the whole mechanism. And so what I'm changing right now is for the architecture. I removed the engine because I moved. Uh, it was confusing, and in fact, uh, only under, the under is uh, is needed. So I moved all the code inside the under. I also removed the specification of uh, sparse uh, subset and uh, full data handler, and moved all the code, in fact, inside the the data. And also, I'm going to also remove the sparse data and uh, merge it with the subset data. Um, and so what has changed inside the component? So you still have your triangulation, you want to create your info on your FEM. So now you either create only uh, the topology handler, I mean, you either register it only, or you can register it with a, a topology handler that you created. And the idea is you only need to create this guy if you need to specify, uh, I mean, uh, specific behavior. So like, for example, I said, uh, when I'm computing my triangle uh, mass, uh, I need uh, the information of the, of the neighbor. So when you register this guy, uh, automatically the handler will be will register this data, the triangle data, to the list of triangles. And so same uh, when you have a change. Uh, right now, all the topology containers have a list of topology handlers. And, um, they propagate the, the event, for example, if I'm removing a triangle. And so now this guy has a list of callbacks stored inside the map. 
and uh, the, the key of the map are in fact the um, event topology event. So if you here you register a specific uh, function to be called when you remove a triangle, this guy will call it when he when he receives the information that a triangle has been removed. And finally, you after you update also the data. Okay, that was it. So what is coming next is to finalize uh, the architecture of the uh, the core uh, the, the, the classes of, uh, of topology. Then to finalize also the, the API of topical change, so what I just presented. Uh, also, we also integrate, or uh, we discuss uh, how to integrate uh, sofa caribou topology. Um, and uh, the last oops, big steps are also to put tests on the different components that we know we want to handle topological change, and, also, and after propagate the new design. Great, thanks. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, I, I don't know for for everyone else here in, in the room, but it's uh, always good to have uh, the you know the full overview of the topology to understand already what's going to change and why and, and so on and so forth. Um, there will be there will be a dedicated uh, room I think this afternoon. Uh, that's on the roadmap of Eric at Infinite Three D. So it's things that uh, that will evolve. I think it's also of interest of both Stefan uh, and Florence. These topics that uh, that are actually uh, uh, hot topics for for you guys. Maybe I was thinking while you were presenting. Maybe Francois Tinsimo would uh, would also be interested uh, in in taking part in, in the discussion. Maybe maybe not. I mean, just just mentioning. So I think that's uh, that's going to be discussed right uh, right uh, afterwards. Uh, could you give us the link of the GitHub link that you have here? Because uh, obviously it's not clickable. And if uh, if we can. Uh, out the, the sofa project. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, in the interface we, we can't, but just uh, right. Thanks. I'm gonna take the presenter back. If there is, uh, if there is, uh, Stefan, at what time the topo discussion will take place? Uh, so that's, I mean, since it's one of the clearly uh, uh, roadmap topic that will uh, that will progress. Um, that's something that we that we already scheduled a bit uh, a, a bit before. the The agenda is not yet settled, but if you need a, if you need a, if you need a one specific time here, it's today. Yeah, the, yeah, there will be this afternoon. Yeah, already a discussion. Okay. Can you can you find it or? Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Pan. Okay. The idea is that we we pre, we usually do not like you know to to provide a full pre-organized agenda because the idea is that you also uh, uh, in uh, you all basically from your developments coming in the next months you you will tell us what actually to what has to be discussed what has to 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 be further uh, yeah further discussed uh, on specific topics we knew already that. Topology was one of them, so obviously there is a, a schedule that have to that has to be saved for it. But yeah, that's. Uh, uh, our, moreover, we didn't we didn't want to uh, schedule specifically for today because today the discussions for today are a bit special and uh, roadmap focused and objective uh, listing focused. So that's why we didn't uh, we didn't display. Uh, 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 specific schedule for today's discussions. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there will be there will be. Uh, now we will move to actually we covered all that has been done in the last six months. Then now we'll 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 move to the future basically. Uh, we'll move to what will occur, uh, and just just before that, it's uh, you'll see it's uh, one or two slides. It's uh, super short, and I'm gonna be super short about it. You can see here the stat of the currently provisional numbers, so it's what will be the statistics of the next release. Uh, there will be more actually than 360 pull requests, which is quite a lot, so it's cool. They were, they were a, a, a nice activity uh, with, as you can notice, a lot of breaking features coming from SOFA-NG, changes in topology, uh, the header cleanings from Damien, so that's that's we know is sometimes hard to, to follow, but never is day to get back to us for information and also new features 
there, there is several cool new features. Like we, we did not take the time to mention that, but a new uh, GUI for so far, a super simple GUI based based on GLFW from Fred. The uh, yeah, we mentioned already the work of Alex on the on the collision detection, parallelizing it as well, along with Lali and uh, the work as well from the Japan Research Institute GIST uh, on making uh, shell elements uh, in open source in SOFA. So that's things that are pretty cool and few digits here about SOFA. Number of clones since the last release, and it's only for the last six months. Number of clones, downloads, and I'm talking about unique cloners here. Um, forum, uh, forum statistics as well, uh, for new users and new new topics uh, that are that are coming in. So that's uh, that's for uh, that's yeah actually that's for only for this month here. All right, we'll move to the plans. What are you planning actually for? the next steps and that will define the topic of discussions we already prepared few slots actually of discussions uh, concerning those ones here uh, and we will present the whole agenda uh, after uh, right after uh, lunch starting at uh, starting back at 1 30 but beforehand we'll i'd like to to get already we're, we're going to carry on because we, we were just talking about topologies and I'll suggest we carry on with actually your plan and your, your work that you did in Toposim, which is your own library of uh, topological changes and physics simulation. And it will introduce the discussion that will occur in a room about how to maybe couple that and, and how it will be related to Eric uh, Eric's work. Is that fine for you, Florence? Yeah, you're unmuted, I see that. Yeah, perfect. I can make you presenter and you'll be able to to share your screen. And in the meantime, for others, if you, you, you do not belong to those five topics and you want to be active in the roadmap in so far uh, or in open source project in the next six months, let us know and, and just take the mic within this session uh, until 12.30 uh, uh, and uh, we will add. Uh, we can add some rooms for technical discussions. Yeah, go ahead, Florence. It's okay for you. You can see my slides. I don't know. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, um, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Florence Zara. I'm a associate professor at Lyon in uh, Lyris, and I will present you uh, our work about the development of C++ library for physical simulation with uh, dynamical change. So our goal is to easily manage change during a physical simulation. Uh, the change could be made according to some criteria of uh, accuracy, refinement, cutting, or piercing purpose. And uh, here you can see some movie with uh, topological change. And uh, at right, I don't know if you see my uh, mouse, uh, you can see a beam in flexions. And the idea is to change uh, physical models during the simulation. So we want to both change topology and uh, physics formulation during simulations. So uh, to perform this, uh, you use, uh, you propose a unified uh, data structures. So you, you, we use a combinatorial map uh, model for as a topological model. Uh, it will uh, be, it uh, has been proposed by Lienhardt uh, a long time ago. And uh, in this model, the space is uh, subdivided into cells of E dimensions. So we have a uh, vertex, uh, edge, uh, 2D or 3D uh, elements. Uh, and then we have some dots and pointer between dots to define the relation uh, incidence and agency relationships between uh, uh, these cells. And uh, with this topological model, uh, we ensure the topological validity when you perform uh, some change during simulation. Then we have to add the geometry in these uh, topological models. So we add the geometry uh, into uh, zero cells. And we have now the linear cell complex uh, combinatorial uh, topological model, sorry. 
And uh, so using the LCC model, we can uh, easily mix inside the same object cells of different topology, like uh, hexahedra, prince tetrahedra in uh, 3D, or triangle or quads uh, in uh, 2D dimensions. Then we have to associate uh, uh, some physical information uh, into e cell so we add a physical formation formulation uh, currently we made the implementation of a mass spring systems and a mass tensor approach we choose uh, these two models because we have uh, a formulation independent uh, for each uh, cell so it's uh, easy to to make some uh, some first test so for mass spring systems, the spring formulation of force is associated to one cell, to edge, and to uh, two or three cells, if you have uh, some internal uh, springs. For the mass tensor approach, we have in formulation uh, inside each 3D element. And uh, we ensure direct access to, to physical information uh, to be efficient. And uh, at the end, we can mix inside the same object several physical formulations. Uh, as you see before, uh, for example, for the mass tensor uh, approach, we can uh, mix uh, several constitutive law inside the same object. Then to, to perform the topological change during the simulation, we have just to use the, the uh, operation of the combinatorial map. So it's the UNSU uh, operator. And we have just to uh, update mechanical properties for, for the mass spring uh, system. We have to update, uh, like uh, Eric said before, the mass, the mass and the springs uh, uh, information. So at the end, we can dynamically change the topology of cells. Uh, or to change the, the constitutive law or all the physical formulation for each, each cell. So here we can see, uh, in fact, some old pictures and movies because uh, since uh, January, uh, we implement uh, all the Toposim library, uh, thanks uh, Guillaume Damien, and we have just to finalize uh, some uh, test uh, experiment to validate to to validate uh, all the, the process. But now we have a library uh, with a generosity on each cells and it's easy to change during the simulation, both so the topology and the uh, physical formulation of each cell. So if uh, you have any question about this, I'm here. Thank you, Florence. Yeah, I think. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Stefan, go ahead. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> we can talk about this. And I, I think there's certainly some very interesting discussion to have around, uh, I would say, what John Nicola has done with Caribou, what you just presented, and what uh, Eric presented just uh, before. I really like the idea of being able to mix different. Uh, element types in uh, the mesh. That certainly is something we should be able to do. And I, I believe, but if Jean-Nicolas is still around, he can confirm that, that in Caribou, we also have uh, this capability. So uh, I think, you know, it, it'd be really interesting. To me, there, there are two parts that are worth discussing. One is how we could, for instance, uh, at least conceptually, uh, connect your approach to the topologies with what uh, we are doing with Caribou. And, and another end, you know, how we could sort of take advantage of what you've done in the work that Eric is doing. Um, but th there are two different things. There's just the pure topological aspect and there's, you know, topologies used in the context of uh, physics-based simulation. Uh, I think at least for the second part, uh, I, I think what you've shown is really interesting. So we should, we should discuss more. Mm, yes. <laughs> Jean-Nicolas, I don't know if you're around uh, and want to comment. Uh, 
I have it for I have it in the topic if you'd like. Uh, so it can be this afternoon or it can be even because yeah, it, it, it's maybe a bit more long term, but uh, it could be it could be nice to discuss that uh, yeah. even if it's uh, tomorrow or, or or Thursday, as you wish. Today I have a, a constraint from three thirty to four thirty. I have another core, uh, but if we want to discuss this before or after. Uh, it's fine. I see Jean-Nicolas is typing a message, so okay, okay. he's somewhere. <laughs> uh, all right. So yeah, there will be different. I think the part about the topology, as you said, uh, Stefan, there is two parts: topologies and mixing, uh, mi mi mixing physics, uh, physical approaches. Um, and uh, yeah, and and for sure, the topology part will be addressed uh, this uh, this afternoon. So uh, Eric, you already. Just, yeah. uh, I, I think. Uh, if we even forget for a second about topologies, I think the idea of being able to have a physics-based model that somehow adapts to um, this, the constraints in the general sense, like, you know, if it's not deformed much or if it's highly deformed and being able to switch from one representation to another uh, based on... Um, again the strain rate or you know computation time requirements i think this is also uh, a quite interesting topic mm -hmm. uh, even independently of topologies but if we have an approach that uh, helps support this i think it's cool but for fem i think um, you know being able to mix uh, excite role elements and tetrad role elements for instance or exam prisms I think it's 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 supposed to be able to to work. So I think uh, we should at least investigate this. I you, you can, I already added one slot here. I, I think it's discussions with an S. The link I'm not sure I'm going to test it right now, but it should be yeah. Uh, I, it's for the discussions of tomorrow and after tomorrow for this topic of mixing uh, physical approaches. Uh, I set uh, I set up uh, here a schedule, but feel free to just find a common uh, a common uh, schedule for mm -hmm. for you guys mm -hmm. but yeah again this this afternoon will be a topologist. Uh, uh, can you say uh, another word for tomorrow's presentation about uh, from jack hale about phoenix uh, for automatic differentiation stefan yeah yeah of course i was going to but um, so for a little while and i think uh, <laughs> it's also uh, a discussion we had years ago we've been thinking about uh, how to, in, in the context of Caribou, for instance, uh, how to very easily uh, add new equations, constitutive models in, you know, the plugin. So, you know, how to basically create very efficiently, but also uh, by lim while trying to limit the risk of errors, how to create a, a new force field, basically. Okay. And, um, Several of us in the team have looked at Phoenix, and Phoenix is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's, uh, it's a very cool software that allows you to write your partial differential equation and basically uh, on simple geometries for now, generate a numerical solution for that. And uh, at the core of Phoenix, because I forgot its name for now, but there's a package used for automatic differentiation, which uh, seems to work quite well. And, you know, when you look at uh, the, the few Python lines that are needed to just write the equivalent of force field, uh, it, it's really cool. It, it gets you also closer to the actual equation. So maybe not for like super fast, uh, FEM computation, but for prototyping new ideas, I think this uh, would be really cool to have in so far. And it just happens that we have a collaboration with the team in uh, Luxembourg, and Jack Hale just told me that he has redesigned completely uh, this part in Phoenix. So timing seems like perfect. They are super interested also in the idea of maybe combining this with so far because they have other limitations in Phoenix that we may not have in so far. So if you're interested in basically uh, the idea of 
being able to prototype new force fields uh, and, and have uh, easy to implement uh, Python code to generate new types of deformable structures. Uh, we'll have Jack Hale present what he's been working on in what will be the next version of Phoenix. And uh, hopefully this can be built into so far. Uh, the part he's going to talk about is really how you can write your partial differential equation, your constraints, and generate C++ code. So maybe this part is really cool for us. And it will be tomorrow at 1.30 p.m., if I remember correctly. Ago. Correct, yeah, 1.30, yeah. 1.30 to 3. Uh, I think it should be, you told me to, it should be an hour, something like that, not more than an hour. If it's more, I mean, there is one, one, one hour and 30 minutes, so. Yeah, an hour should be, should be enough uh, to, to get a sense of what they are doing. And then if we really think this makes sense, uh, we are also invited to go to Luxembourg whenever we want over the summer and actually work alongside with him and try to put that into SOFA. So I'm, I'm trying to build <laughs> a little task force for that. Uh, uh, we'll let yeah. you know. And uh, and as you as you know, uh, I'm, I'm speaking for for him uh, on his behalf. But uh, Damien was I, I don't know if he's interested in terms of actively being involved, but at least he, he had some experience uh, of automatic differentiation in SOFA, so could be mm -hmm. a good asset to keep in keep in mind. Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, if we if we ever do something you know practical and actually trying to implement some sort of. Uh, proof of concept, this would take place over the summer. So we'll, we'll of course, contact Damien and whoever else again wants to join. And Christian, you were? Yeah, I was I oh. was also, so in, in, because there is, I think, and there is another interest into this. It's also um, the capacity of being able to, to differentiate uh, a model in general in particular when you want to do optimization so if you want to to inverse your simulation and find some parameters uh, it's really nice to have this capacity of diff so mm -hmm. a lot of people are now nowadays are, are looking at differentiable fem so, so i mm -hmm. think it's it's another part which is also could be really also really interesting mm -hmm. yeah definitely it would be nice to have a, a few guys from also so from soft robotics field uh, that would bring another point of view. So so to, to have if we if we start uh, an implementation over the summer, indeed to have something that would work for both cases. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Christian. Um, and yeah, there was also a point uh, brought by Alex, right, uh, about matrices. And a point about um, uh, error management and also the next steps of so far, uh, next gen, but Fred mentioned them already a bit. Uh, uh, so maybe we could start with you, Alex, if it's fine for you, if you're, yeah. Yeah, sure. Do um, you have, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, just oral presentation or uh, do you want to show the slides already? Um, um. I don't know. Uh, just, this is just to introduce you, uh, the okay, topic, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, no, yeah. just let me know. Um, yeah, so the, the, the idea is that uh, over the past uh, month, maybe years, I don't know, uh, there is uh, this idea to, to refactor or redesign how um, FEM matrices uh, work uh, in SOFA. And uh, in particular, um, there are two methods. Uh, one is uh, to assemble uh, a matrix, matrix and, um, and then solve it and solve the system associated. Uh, and the other uh, approach is um, not to build uh, explicitly the matrix and um, and still we are able to to solve to solve the system so um we have maybe this idea of um managing only the and changing the architecture so that uh, we assemble uh, the matrices uh, so that it could be maybe easier to understand for newcomers um 
so for example if you want to design a force field today it's uh, it's a bit complicated to understand what at uh, d force at k2 matrix uh, stands for uh, so we want to maybe simplify uh, the api uh, and uh, and uh, maybe have um, some uh, solvers that could uh, where we we could write uh, code closer to the to the actual mathematical equations uh, so this has an impact on uh, a lot of uh, components in in sofa yeah sorry Christ christian I, I forgot to mention the constraint uh, <laughs> matrices uh, it, yeah, it has an impact on uh, a lot of components, e even on the masses, uh, actually. Uh, so it's a big, big topic. We have to uh, take some decisions. Um, of course, discussion, we don't have to forget about the performances. Um, so it will be uh, ultra breaking. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a, that's a topic for generally it's assembling matrices that that we are actually not doing much or rarely if you only if you are using direct solvers you are assembling a matrix and even if you are using a direct solver you are actually assembling a, a one single matrix but it's always impossible to access the sub matrices it's even sometimes impossible to propagate some forces be below in a mapping to your object. So there is a lot of limitations. And the idea here, as uh, Alex said, it's to review, restart, uh, and, and, and to really put back all the plan of matrix assembly in SOFA, especially the, uh, what's the name again? Um, uh, Multi-matrix accessor. So it, it's ba basically this component that will be uh, uh, targeted and, and completely changed for a new approach. So that's all the feedback on this topic would be super interesting always, as Alex said, without forgetting the performances and all the, all the capabilities of SOFA today. So that I think should be discussed this afternoon as well. Uh, and there is, if there is any question about that as for the topology, as for uh, the automatic differentiation before, I was maybe thinking, uh, uh, François Jour might have uh, some some remark on that, or at least maybe uh, yeah, Jean Nico would participate, I guess, to the discussion. Uh, uh, also, yeah, we will build a new default multi node. That's uh, what a nice uh, uh, name. Yeah, yeah, we will try to <laughs> we'll try to find better names. We'll find to we will try to find better implementations, better designs, and and yeah, really as much as we can keep uh, keep performances, even maybe improve them, I think uh, it's, uh, it's completely reachable. So thanks Alex, Alex for uh, this introduction. Let You can directly unmute yourself, you know, if you're already in interested in one of the topics that have been addressed, you can let us know so that uh, so that we can, uh, we can, we can note this and remember. Anyway, we will, uh, uh, we will provide you the full, uh, full agenda once, uh, once all the topic will be covered. Fred, uh, do you want to Cover yeah, we quickly, yeah, we quickly uh, yeah. just present uh, past time. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, I can, I can okay, upload that. Yeah, there you are. No? Okay, so the okay. first, uh, first uh, slide was just uh, what I was, I, was telling, I was telling you before. You just uh, continue the slide. Yeah, we continue and definitely uh, finish it. So uh, the next step, would, nah, next step would be to dispatch according to what we will agree. Hopefully, uh, maybe uh, tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, we, we can agree uh, on the Wednesday morning. So it's not that, not that urgent. And hopefully also uh, we will uh, agree on the workflow. So we can continue to deprecate or remove uh, unsupported plugins to make uh, the, our work easier in the future. Anyway, uh, what I, well, this is a part of concept. I don't really care. And so the second topic I would like to introduce, I mean, we already discussed about that uh, on the sofa dev meetings as well, but we'd like to have a decision on the, how to handle uh, error. Because uh, when I was, uh, we were, I mean, we were factoring the framework, 
uh, I stumbled about the, how to propagate the errors, I mean, into the, from the core. But for example, I mean, the best example I could, I could see was uh, how, I mean, when people were calling a uh, version of uh, matrices, like uh, almost nobody was checking if really uh, you could uh, it, uh, invert, invert the matrices. And if there is uh, an error when uh, inverting uh, a matrix, there is like a CDC out, uh, no, I cannot uh, invert. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult to how to handle that. So uh, our goal was uh, how to force the user to check if the matrix is, is uh, invertible. So that was like, you know, discard in C++, is, but it's not uh, really, uh, how to say it, uh, strict. So we need something like you have to check. And uh, what to do in error is like to give the user the way how to render the error and not uh, what uh, print in the console or anything like that. And the third one, I mean, this will be uh, something easy to, 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 to do. So there is no solution. I mean, this is an eternal uh, debate on C++. So what we were, the, what we were speaking about was like, how we use the standard exception mechanism or the ex expected idiom. So it was a, an idea of uh, some uh, researcher, I don't remember his name. So it was proposed in the C++ standard. It's still not accepted. So at the end, we don't even know if it will be ever accepted. So the two, two solutions are the exception. I mean, everybody knows about the exception. You cannot ignore it. So that's one of the really key points. And it can be informative, maybe too much or something else. And what is not good with that is like, can be tricky to follow the flow the program if there is an error, like with a try and catch. And as a catch, like you are breaking the flow, so it will be difficult to follow. And the try catch itself is sometimes for me is less readable. Uh, apparently, but that I'm not really an expert. That could really be costly for the uh, one throwing an error. But actually, it should not be a really a big uh, a problem because if there is an error, actually you should stop the simulation. So we don't, you don't really care about the performances. And then at the end, uh, also apparently a lot of people can abuse. Uh, I mean, they can build the algorithm around the exception. So we should not do that. So this, uh, this is also a problem. And what the expected idiom is, I mean, you can see the smaller snippet on the right. I don't know if it's really in the sample, but it's a bit of mix of uh, exception and error code. And apparently no performance hit. Uh, so basically just uh, an union of uh, your expected uh, result, or if there is no result, uh, uh, what is your uh, associated error? Uh, but so the, so it's, there is no uh, catch on anything like that. So it's not a problem. The problem is that is the standard, like I said. So there is thousands of implementation on the internet. So what do we choose? The boost one, but we don't want boost. There is also a lot of uh, interface only on the GitHub. So we don't really know. It's really very explicit. So contrary to exception, an exception, you could be implicit. And the problem is it can be ignored at the end. So will not really solve the, our first problem at the beginning. So that's, uh, we will discuss about that in the, in the afternoon or in the, in the technical uh, discussions. That's it. Thanks, Fred. Uh, there was uh, really long so that wants, so that, that could be a topic for this afternoon. So if you are interested, we can uh, we can make uh, make the, the schedule for for it as well. If you are interested, for instance, you can also in the chat let us know. You know, I mean, or interesting and or plus plus whatever, so that we can know that you would uh, you would you would like to look at that uh, along with uh, with Fred. Um, we'll summarize all that what you said before. Uh, so uh, Florence, Eric, uh, I won't cover everybody, everyone, but uh, um, and and present you the the schedule right after. But uh, maybe really long. Uh, you can present us uh, shortly. Uh, uh, so the idea is to be to be done before uh, that. All this session is done before twelve thirty. So uh, in 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 about five minutes, uh, really long. Can you show us? You know what you have been doing because since you are in the US, we are not on the same schedule. Uh, to present us a bit what you've done and and also what what are your plans for the next uh, the next months? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Um, Great. You, you should be able me? now to 
Yeah, yeah, perfectly, perfectly fine. Okay. We should be, you should be able to, to share your your screen now. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, I don't see where's the screen sharing. Um, at the bottom here of the screen. Uh, yeah, here the the fourth oh, okay. on the right. I see, I see. Yeah. yeah. Um, should be the good one. tetrahedral uh, FEM with the plasticity, I see that um, either the elastic part or the plastic part has, uh, uh, I mean, the behavior uh, is uh, affected by the meshing. So, uh, for example, in this figure on the left is the uh, tetrahedral match that I generated by uh, partitioning the uh, hex, uh, the grid. In, uh, for each grid, I part uh, for for each hex, I uh, split it into uh, several uh, tetrahedrons. So if I uh, if I directly split the hex into six, uh, you can see that on the top two, they um, both the elastic deformation as well as the plastic deformation suffer from the asymmetrical issue due to the um, directions. Orientation of the meshing, and then I uh, add something that uh, blended a little bit, so I have uh, some uh, different orientations within the uh, uh, within a hex, and then you can see that the elastic deformation looks better, but however the final uh, plastic deformation still has some asymmetric issue. So that's uh, that's the existing method in SOFA, and I so I worked on the uh, hexahedral fan element, and so m basically my idea is to uh, uh, decompose the uh, deformation gradient F uh, into the elastic and plastic part, and further I uh, decompose it into the uh, rotational part and the stretching part. Uh, either uh, into the uh, elastic part and the plastic part. And my uh, currently my uh, implementation in SOFA looks like uh, this. I had a class that called hexahedroelastic plastic FEM force field that inherits the um, in, in, inherits the, from the hexahedro FEM force field and then uh, which inherits from the uh, force field. So current my uh, basically my method overrides the some existing class and methods in the hexahedral FEM force field. Uh, for example, the hexahedral information. So I have added some plastic information and plastic material properties in that, uh, which stores on each hexahedron. And also in the add force method, I. Uh, I add the decomposition of the total string into the plastic and elastic part in the accumulate force. Therefore, only the elastic force will be uh, taken into account as when we compute the force. And then I add the update rest state mesh method that will um, update the uh, uh, the mesh in the rest rest base to absorb the uh, plastic deformation. Um, so this is currently what my uh, uh, code uh, look like, and let me give you some uh, results of the uh, my uh, hexahedral uh, FPM. So first, here is the stretching test. 
Um, uh, so I uh, modeled a bar, uh, a bar with uh, structured hexahedral mesh, and uh, I assigned some different uh, plastic uh, properties, and then I stretching the center of the bar uh, of the uh, of, of the three different uh, bars with different uh, properties, and the result is uh, you can see uh, the result is. Uh, doesn't have the asymmetric issue. Um, so actually, I, I, I can uh, show it in a video. Uh, besides of the stretching, I also uh, adding some twisting because I have the uh, rotational plasticity uh, part. So I slightly uh, can uh, model some uh, uh, amounts of twisting in uh, deformation. So here uh, I have two different methods and also different properties of the uh, plasticity that gives the um, twisting results. I think the, I have a short video to uh, see the, the uh, demo the results. Yeah, so here's the, there's, here's the tetrahedral IPM in SOFA. Uh, it has the asymmetric uh, deformation. Oh. Yeah, so here's the stretching test of my uh, plasticity hexahedral model. And there's the twisting. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing that I add to the uh, plasticity is I add the uh, volume preservation. So yeah, uh, here's the application like when I used the uh, the uh, grasper to stretch in the fatty tissue. And also I, uh, uh, some applications when, uh, on the uh, in, uh, embedded simulation in SOFA. And, and what is yeah again what is cool, uh, cool is you know the, the the approach you had uh, for for uh, not uh, re-implementing but just inheriting from from the existing uh can you tell us more about you know your plans what what's coming up in the next uh, six months uh, then, uh, Rudan? yeah yeah sure so one one direction is uh i want to um integrate my uh, plastics method into a hyper elastic material so currently, um, my uh, implementation is based on the uh, co-rotational uh, linear co-rotational uh, model. So since the hyperelasticity, I think it's a uh, better ca characterized uh, sub tissue behavior. Um, so that's one direction. And also, um, uh, I uh, also working on improving a little bit of the. Uh, uh, Improving some uh, stability issue of the my code uh, as my uh, uh, and is, is your code open or or is that in a private plugin that you are working? Uh, I uh, I'm I think I'm going to uh, create the a uh, pull request. Uh, okay. Right now I still cleaning a bit of the code. Okay. And cool. also there's a some small issues that I want to get fixed before. Uh, Sending you as the pull request. Uh, okay, perfect, great, uh, and yeah, maybe uh, I was thinking, you know, preparing the the, the committee that it, it could be a good uh, a good opportunity as well to merge that a, a bit to uh, with the with the what is happening around Caribou, the Caribou plugin, uh, you know, where again the mechanical laws are well separated from the topology from the. Uh, uh, yeah, from the kind of element and so on. I think it, it, it would be nice, you know, since you're looking at hyperelastic, plastic behavior and so on, adding all those features to Caribou could be also interesting and me maybe even a bit simpler than what uh, what, what what you faced here uh, directly hitting the, the Exahedron uh, FEM force field that was challenging and that you that you succeeded to do. Um, yeah. yeah. 
we, 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 there should be a discussion about that. Uh, I think tomorrow, uh, tomorrow there would be a discussion about uh, late, late in the day, so that you can join, uh, because it's, it, it's, it won't be in our morning. It should be yours, so it could be, could be interesting if you are up to. Uh, great. Uh, what? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right, I'm going to take presenter again. Get back to the slides of the STC there. And uh, there we are. OK. So now we will move to uh, first a lunch uh, in, in, a, in a, about five minutes, if it's fine for you guys. If you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna, if there is a, one of the topic that was yours and that you will be working on in the next six months and that was not covered or mentioned before, please raise the hand, unmute yourself, and let us know. I, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna maybe share my screen. It should be. It will be the easiest uh, way, I think, to to do it. Uh, where is that? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just finding the right documents right there one more all right should be fine okay um so I, i'm gonna present you the 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 schedule of this afternoon so the idea is to again really the purpose of all, all the meetings all the discussions is really to end up so to have a list of topics to be discussed, okay? And then within the, the rooms, we, we're gonna create different, you know, it's called breakout rooms, but it's sub rooms. We will connect here again at 1.30, discuss those different topics. And the idea is always as much as possible to come with a list. It, has, it can be a short list, uh, even if it's a short list, but of doable objectives, basically your objectives up to the next technical committee, so basically in six months, five, six months. Uh, and at the end of the discussion session, we'll review uh, very shortly, it will be done in a, in a, I think, a quarter of an hour and a few, like 15 minutes and review all those objectives to sum summarize the roadmap and, and start defining it, okay? So for, I'm gonna share, that's where I'm gonna sharing, share, share, share my whole screen there. Right. Let me know if you cannot see it. Should be fine now. So you should start. Yeah. Now it should it should be it should be working. You should see now the planning. We will update the slides and we will keep. Uh, we will. Um, I, I will leave the room with this uh, with the following slide here. Uh, we'll start at one thirty. We will look again at the schedule see so if one of the topic you again you are not you're, you're going to work on in the next six months is not in this table please let us know you see there is still room for discussions so let us know over the lunch and we'll uh, again at 1 30 when we when we will reconnect we will uh, we will make sure that everyone knows about it advertise it and so that you have a, a schedule and a slot for a slot for that. So you see there, there will be a topic about SOFA next gen for how to organize, how to architecture the, the future next gen version of SOFA. There, there is a session about SOFA plus AI. So this coupling, uh, it was uh, SOFA gym and uh, deep physics. I think it would be nice to have a, a discussion uh, on, on this topic as well. Several people were interested in cable simulations. I'm thinking about, you know, UNES. I know you are going to have some future developments. Uh, Kami, uh, along with UNES. Aine, um, Pengyu as well will be interested. So I think that there could be a group here uh, that, uh, that arose from your feedback, actually, uh, in, your, in your registration when you're registered to, to the event. A session about user experience, again, uh, it can be user or dev experience, but that, that would be super interesting to, to share a bit feedbacks for things that you'd like to see in SOFA. Matrix assembly, you know, how to build a matrix, solve the system and assemble this matrix in an efficient way uh, and, and to have all those matrices more accessible in SOFA. That's a project presented by Alex. Topologies and topological changes uh, presented by Eric, Florence and Stefan. 
and uh, we will end up with a performance uh, in constraints. It will be related to the matrix assembly, and it uh, it relates to the point presented and um, suggested by um, uh, François Jourde in the in the registration. So, guys, if something is missing here, please, please, please let us know. Unmute yourself. Send us uh, send us an email, a warning, whatever. But uh, you are most welcome to to let us know. You see, there is two rooms still available, and. Otherwise, for the next days, uh, there is also other slots, but we will discuss that later. Um, Jean-Nicolas would like to move uh, the room three, uh, the second line of the room three of topologies uh, somewhere else, because I guess he would like to participate between matrix assembly, uh, assembly and topologies. So maybe to move the topologies uh, in room one at 3.45, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for that we will we'll see maybe with that because I think uh, Stefan cannot. Uh, yeah, Stefan said yeah, there ah. was a. So for all for, for all others, if there is, any, uh, we'll discuss that again uh, in the in the coming minutes, uh, Fred uh, and John Nico. Uh, let's let's discuss that. But um, just to just to make sure that that anyone else on other topics is there conflict of agenda? Is there any problem or missing information? Please let us know. So I see Florence wrote me here. Okay. Yeah, and and for joining each sub rooms one, two, and three, just first come back in this room, and we will make the dispatch right afterwards. All right. If it's fine for you guys, let's have a short lunch. Rui Long, uh, I know the, the 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 breakfast is over, but. Uh, you can have a coffee for for this uh, one hour break and we will restart at 1 30 sharp uh, and and for jean nico we, we can uh, we can actually discuss and try how to arrange things with uh, along with eric uh, florence and stefan okay if stefan uh, florence you're still here maybe we can we can unmute ourselves and, and chat a bit uh, about this topic eh? do you want to listen uh, just uh we want to start at uh, at two o'clock. That's it. If it is possible, sorry. Uh, ah, okay. You would like to make you would like to make it uh, um, earlier. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Instead of okay. Uh, Jean, Jean Nico, uh, Stefan, is that fine for you guys as well? Yes, I'm av I'm available. Uh, I mean, anytime. Uh, okay. Anytime. It's, it's just that uh, I would really like. To be a part of yeah. both matrix yeah. assembly and yeah. topology. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. We can maybe switch uh, then cable simulation and uh, if it's uh, if I think those two here could be could be switched if it's fine for UNES Kami uh, so that yeah UNES Kami INA and and PayNew if it's fine fine this way. Okay. Again, provide us any feedback if uh, if you are unhappy or if you'd like to see things uh, change or whatever. Okay. And I wish you, and we wish you all a very good lunch. And we can restart. It's 1.30 sharp. Um, okay, I see Nick typing. I don't know if there is, yeah, how many are we? 23. There is, yeah, about six people who got disconnected. I see that Alban is there, but without really connecting. I don't know why. Uh, Alban, uh, I don't know why you are either audio only or maybe we can, uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see if you connect afterwards. Okay, perfect. So, so welcome back for the, the one who are just arriving. Uh, and yeah, this afternoon, as, as you know, it's for definition of the roadmap and the, so the tasks you're going to work on, on uh, and we are going to work on all together in the next uh, six months. The idea is always to have some kind of one contact so that we can ask a bit of feedback, especially about the discussions of this afternoon. And the and what is a roadmap task is really something where uh, it is uh, there. There is a commitment that it will evolve in the next uh, in the next six months. That's below all the topics that have been mentioned earlier this morning. We schedule them as we showed you earlier uh, uh, for for this afternoon session in three rooms. Uh, so as you can see, uh, room one, uh, sofa ng plus handling uh, management of errors. 
then there will be user and dev experience and a free a free schedule room to coupling sofa and ai uh, uh, especially i'm thinking uh, of uh, about a discussion between etienne robin pierre uh, uh, francois francois lecomte I, I think i was thinking uh, and pedro uh, that's i think the different people that could be uh, interested here uh, then matrix assembly uh, with again with uh, Alex who presented that this morning, uh, Jean Nico, Christian, Adrien, ZQ, I think could be interested, Francois, Jourde could be also interested by this matrix assembly. Uh, and uh, last but not least, the performances of co in constraints, which is a bit in the continuity of this matrix assembly. And in the third room, topology first, Eric, Florence, Stéphane. Uh, Jean Nico as well. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm forgetting anyone. And again, do not hesitate just to join the rooms. And uh, in a second time, there will be, uh, so in the second schedule, there will be then cable simulation. Uh, I was thinking about, I think uh, it was interesting for uh, Kami, Younes, uh, Aine, Yupeng as the one, the first ones I'm actually thinking about. Yeah, good, good point, uh, Eric. There could be actually a discussion about. Uh, uh, multi-threading and GPU uh, um, that 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 could be that could be actually addressed. I know that Alex, who is on multi-threading, will be already busy in those two here. I think he would he will be interested by those two here. So so yeah, either we could organize something tomorrow, or or at least something maybe specific to GPU could be interesting. Uh, could be yeah, could be definitely interesting. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, with you, Eric, uh, Adrien. So maybe we can uh, we can add that here to the. But we have to be sure that there will be uh, one uh, team leader or contact or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We need some commitment from for, from somebody, for sure. All right. Yeah, and as Guillaume noticed, so there will be those discussions in the in the three different rooms, and uh, always the idea is to is to take as much notes as possible, especially the list of objectives uh, as it is written here on the slide, uh, list of objectives for the the next six months, so that we can uh, we can display that uh, display that to the community and also you know feed uh, the discussions for next STC. All right. Is there uh, so, Eric? Thank you for very much for the su suggestion. Is there any other suggestion which is uh, actually not in the in the table and that you would like to work on for the next the next months, for instance? So go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, please go and type. Uh, I'm just gonna grab another computer for a recording, and. So around so around so I think there is for, for the moment no one that will be dedicated to work on that for the next months. Um, I think it's more like funding, uh, searching for funding, which is ongoing. So yeah, I think. Let, 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 correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, Guillaume Fred, I'll, I'll let you the floor. I'm just going to grab uh, another computer for recording the the room into which I would be. So I guess I will create the rules. Um, once I will have done it, you will see on your screen an invitation to choose one. So uh, you, I'm not sure if you will know. You won't see anymore the um, the, the 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 three rooms we have here. So just uh, keep in mind what which room you want uh, now. It will be one, two, and three, uh, so that you, you don't. But uh, anyway, you will be able to uh, to switch rooms afterwards. Um, let's do that now. If I and uh, uh, you know, each room there will be uh, one of us. So Nick, you were asking about uh, recording. And, uh, each of us we will uh, record our own room. So. Likely, uh, we will have all the recordings for all the topics. If there is no mistake or anything else. 
So uh, at what time did we say we started the, the rooms? We are a bit early, but it's okay. So I plan to end for 60 minutes. Yes, and what uh, I wanted also to add, to, to add uh, with the recording is like, even if <laughs> one room is full of French, they should speak in English as well. Yeah, as, as much as possible, so that the, the recording is actually useful useful afterwards. We have people, you know, in the US, we have for this afternoon, it will be especially people from South Korea that won't really be able to join because of the schedule. Uh, I'm pretty sure they would be interested to, 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 be, to be part of the discussions and, and, and therefore having them recorded in English is just uh, the, finest, uh, the finest gift we can, uh, we can make them. So, yeah. So Let's if you guys are ready, I will click the button. You will see an invitation. You choose uh, one, two, or three according to the. Shall we just wait? Uh, just a, a few more minutes so that uh, yeah. we can, we can le let uh, yeah. the, le the latest uh, guys uh, incoming, and especially if there is any other suggestions uh, as for GPU in so far. Is there, for instance, anyone interested in this topic? Uh, I was thinking about Adrian. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, is he? No, I don't see him here, right now. I don't know what to choose. You can fly between uh, the three if you want, and put your uh, your your little uh, salt in everyone. So uh, I'm just going to show you and go and fly and go away. <laughs> and uh, uh, Younes, for instance, do you, I'm, I'm taking people uh, in in the right order here. Do you know where, in which room to go, and and you know, can you can you find the the, the interest, interesting spots for you? Bruno, Pierre, same. Can, can you can you find some some rooms into which you you feel uh, you feel comfortable to to join in? There's uh, some that I uh, that I I found interesting. I think, uh, like Young said, I will uh, shuffle and uh, go and. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Can we? Uh, I, I see where where you would be heading, Fr François. François Jouard, do you, do you do you see? Uh, do you, do you have some specific rooms where where you wanna when you wanna, you wanna attend already? Um, for the second time slot, like uh, I don't know exactly if um, matrix assembly or, or cable simulation, but uh, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, but uh, maybe I'd flow uh, since uh, Alex uh, BJ wanted um, maybe to to investigate how we can use our code base at Insimo, uh, the our public code base. Maybe I just follow where whichever room uh, it attend. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it'll be there. It'll be in the. In, in the in the room too, I guess. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, ah, welcome, Maxime. Uh, we've got an anatoscope guy uh, joining in. Welcome, François Lecourte. Do you do you know François? Uh, do you know François? Uh, which one you would be interested in? Uh, Michel, uh, take care of the topics for for you, Michel. Yeah, room two for you. Perfect. Um, I see. Yeah, Olivier. Olivier, especially. I'm thinking about the maybe the constraint approach. Performance performances in constraint could be interesting. Uh, matrix assembly, obviously, as well. Uh, yeah. I hope. I hope the the schedule is fine for you too. And uh, okay. Okay. I think we'll be we'll be able to to start right now. So. Now I'm going to just to make things super clear in case the table is not, but that's for right now. So you'll have the choice between room one, two, and three. Fred will be in one, I'll be in two, Guillaume in, Guillaume in three. We'll record all the sessions uh, so that you can also come back, come back to the video uh, hopefully later on. And that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, <laughs> Guillaume will have a the pleasure to enter the dense topic of topology. So I think you no, can... Don't worry, I will have nothing to say, so... <laughs> Read on me more. All right. You can... Have you already the button ready to, to be clicked, uh, Guillaume? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go. Yeah, I see Francois typing. I uh, can 
second uh, chat uh, while I'm doing it. So I'm waiting for your signal to go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Let's let's make the rooms and. Okay, let's go.